All right, we are live. Thank you so much for coming and watching. This is our fourth week, fourth consecutive week, which is an accomplishment around here because I can run a little behind. So I'm kind of proud of that right now. Um, Meredith is behind me. She's ready with all of your questions. So please let them fly. We're going to be drawing the Incredible Hulk today. I'm going to draw like a rampaging running Hulk with a little bit of debris at his feet and something a little bit more dynamic this time. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Oh, I see Dude Powers here. Thanks for coming, dude. Eric Grove, thank you so much. Eric is our moderator tonight. So thank you very much for that, Eric. Hi, Alex Xavier. Hi, Stephen Bell. Chris Noth. Jai Bobby. Jibobby. Jibobby. Art. Brandon Spence. What's up? Chris, Chris Noth, I already said that. Hey, Rob Doria is here. Great to see Rob Doria here. And Daniel Corbett and Rafael Santos. All right, I'm gonna start. Here we go. All right, we'll start with two questions that are very similar. One from Eddie Meza yeah. um, and Daniel Corbett. Eddie wants to know, if you have any tips for making original characters, and Daniel's question is similar, how do you approach drawing figures from imagination? Well, um, as far as drawing um, original characters goes, uh, that can be a challenge because so many things have been done. So uh, it's, it's impossible to work in a bubble. Uh, ideally, what you, I would say you would want to do, if it's possible, is to um it, batman is a character you can tell in silhouette you can tell spider-man in silhouette some of these characters are just so iconic that you don't need any detail at all if you can create a character that that works uh without any sort of detail and, and somebody can just tell what it is right away then that is a great character design that's an incredibly difficult thing to do um and as far as drawing the other question was drawing characters from imagination uh you know i would say watch my gesture drawing video i put it out a couple of weeks ago and uh it really comes down to developing your own internal visual library of of poses and and things that uh that work You're, it's not something you can really get in a bubble and it's it's not really something you can get from going to a you know a coffee shop not that we can really do that right now but you know going to a, a restaurant or something and just observing people isn't really um going to give you really dynamic characters I, you can look at uh sports that's a great way to to get figures if you want to look at at life more um i highly recommend looking at other artists and just breaking down their figures and a lot of the way that i'm kind of doing right now which is just a, a really simple uh just gesture drawing right i'm just scribbling really um, and I already drew his leg in. I didn't like it, so we're fixing it. And it's it's a matter of making the whole figure work. I'm just holding my pencil very, very loosely, really loosely, and uh, just scribbling in where I, I want my my basic shapes to go. And I'm not worrying about any kind of detail. I'm worrying about proportion a bit, but not too much. It's much more just a matter of getting my figure blocked in so I know where things are gonna be. And within a couple of seconds here, you can see I've got the framework that's gonna establish whether this picture is gonna work or not um, overall. So um, it's it's a simple process laying something out, but it also requires you know years of, of uh, study. So um, now I would say it's something you could benefit from tomorrow. You know, you don't need to work on it for years and years to, to find the, the benefits of it. But um, uh, really with anything with art, the more you do it, the better you get, ideally. So um, Charles Petri wants to know how much you are enjoying these Sunday streams. Uh, I'm enjoying them a lot. Both Meredith and I were actually a little tired today, I think. So we're both thinking, oh no, I don't know how this is going to go. But already I'm starting, I'm enjoying it. It's great to see everybody here, um, you know. And uh, I feel like it, even in my videos, um, 
there's a connection with you guys and I read all the comments and uh, I, I feel like I'm talking directly to you, but uh, never more so than when we're doing this. So yeah, I, I really enjoy this a lot. And I know Meredith does too, despite the fact that you're a little tired right now. Tired. Yeah. All right, CPG, what is the best way to study comic book artists when you're learning to draw? Um, the best way to study is it's a there are a few things to really keep in mind. Number one is um, gesture drawing. I, I, I say it over and over again, but that is a great way to internalize a lot of what an artist does well. So I, I really recommend doing that. Um, but then also you have to have an understanding of, of anatomy. Um, and uh, if you don't know where generally the muscles go and well, not more than just generally, if you don't know where the muscles go and how they fit together, then when you look at an artist and see how they're approaching it, you're not really going to be able to break it down in a way that's going to be beneficial. And you can end up with a bit of a hackneyed kind of a style. So you, you, you want to have as much knowledge to back you up as, as you can. And then what you do is you look at the way that they approach things and you decide whether, you know, do you like how this person draws a rib cage and you know how a rib cage is supposed to work in, in real, you know, on a real person. Um, and you can choose to go with that interpretation or not. It's, it's a choice. And uh, the more choices you make with the more artists, the more you'll develop your own thing and uh, it actually makes you better at at picking out what other artists do well too so. so then another question from dude power david how do you decide your pose for the drawing uh well this one i wanted to do a rampaging hulk running towards you he's very angry and so i could draw a hulk you know, running like sidelong, but then it's it's nowhere near as dynamic because he's not really coming towards you at all, and it, it doesn't have that you know that impact of uh, like he's about to run you down. You know, um, so I knew I wanted that to go into it, and so so much of it really comes down to the needs of what you're looking to draw so you know it, it, you decide are you going to draw superman do you want him flying or do you want him standing there well you know those answers so many that right there answers so many questions right away so uh i would say that's how you approach it you first you you think about what you, you you know what you want from your character and then you approach the drawing with that in mind um, the door 117 question do you over exaggerate the muscles of the forearm like do you draw them with exact muscles or do you add some more uh, I I definitely probably add some more and uh, you know I I, w I said this a bit ago I was talking to Robert Marzullo and and uh, we were talking about some of the the underlying structure and I realized <laughs> I was kind of getting it wrong so you know I would say I, I can't claim that it's it's actual perfect anatomy. I try to keep it fairly uh, close, but I, yeah, I would say, and you know, something to bear in mind too is muscles can be very striated. So like your, your shoulder muscle has basically three heads. Um, you've got your, you know, your frontal, your middle and your rear head, but uh, with striations, and if you see somebody that's really, really uh, lean, you can see that there, there's a lot more to it than that. So you can use that to give you detail instead of just having, you know, uh, just three heads evenly sized, which can look a little boring, I think. So uh, King Edward, or King Everett, sorry. How much does pencil, pen, paper affect the drawing in detail? Uh, thank you for coming again, King Everett. Uh, Everett. Um, I think we could say that name since that's the name of our child. <laughs> you would think. We did say we were tired today. <laughs> yeah. How much is, does the what? Sorry. Pencil, using pencil or pen or paper, affect the drawing and the detail? Um, less maybe than it, it did when I... Uh, it took me a while to get comfortable with a pencil, obviously starting, and then it took me a while to get comfortable with ink. Right now, I would say I can get more detail with my tiny little pens, I can block in blacks faster. Uh, so it, there's a difference there for sure, but um, it's still essentially the same skill. Like if I, you know, push out a line with a pencil or a pen, it's it's not so terribly different. Especially because I use um, 
I use drawing pens really. I don't I don't use a quill, the kind of tools that are more inking oriented. And the reason I don't is partly because uh, I don't like having an open inkwell sitting around. I've had enough trouble with that in the past, but also because uh, with a pencil I can scribble back and forth. You can't do that effectively with a quill or a brush, but I can do that with one of my um, microns and some of those sorts of pens. Um, Alexander Art, David, what's your favorite part of the process? The roughs, the tight details, inking? Um, you know, I enjoy it all. I really do. I would say I enjoy the fine detail at the end just because I'm almost finished and I, I can kind of stop thinking a little bit and I'm just noodling. So it's very stress free. But then, you know, that time also really correlates when, with when things are due a lot of the time. So, you know, thank you very much for the super chat, my DR. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Oh, I missed it. There it is. I can see it. On, I bet you okay. I can see it on my I'm screen before you. Back in the questions. That's what happened. I'm still back. I'm far back in the questions right now. From the I'm at the beginning. Um, now I lost my place looking for the super chat. Oh, sorry. I threw you off. You did. Um, that's all right. Uh, back at the beginning. Oh, XX Helios. Hello, David. Is it true you made the cover of the Disturbed Best album? Um, you did Indestructible. I did Indestru Indestructible. If, I don't know. That's the only one I did. So if they used it somewhere else, I don't know. Certainly possible. Um, Buddy Buck, would you ever consider doing an interview with James Reyes, the box office artist? I don't know who he is, too. Yeah, of course. Okay. He's doing a series on YouTube where he interviews artists that have broken into the art industry. Yeah, no, I would absolutely do it. I mean, he's uh, he's great. He's incredibly entertaining. Uh, I've watched a lot of his videos. He's just enjoyable to watch. I would absolutely love to do it. And I think it'd be great for me. He's got a huge, huge audience. So uh, I'd be foolish to say no to that. So certainly I would do it. Devos sauce, Devos sauce. Can you tell me how I can improve on drawing packs? Um, on drawing packs. Well, I would say George Bridgman is is really good. He's actually there are some parts of anatomy that he doesn't really break down much, but pecs he really does. So George Bridgman's Guide to Life Drawing is great for that. I would really recommend you take a look at it. He shows how things. Um, connect and how they twist as you move. Uh, I'm going to do a video on that pretty soon. Um, I've got another perspective video uh, that's all ready to go. It just was too long for last week, so I'm going to have that coming this week. And then next week I'm either going to do um, legs, torso, or arms. I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't decided, but one of those three. Um, so we had a super chat from King at King Everett. Thank you very much, King Everett, for the super chat. To know, um, hold on. I meant the specific pen or pencil or paper that you use to draw with. <coughs> so, using like a vellum with a tooth in it versus smooth paper, or using like 300 versus 400 series paper, I'm assuming. Is what he's talking about. Does that make a difference in the final piece of art? Yeah. And the difference in terms of like pens and stuff you use. It does. It does make a difference for sure. Uh, do legs, Mike Stewart says. All right, you know what, Mike? We're gonna do legs just for you. We'll do legs first. Um, I'm using uh, Bristol smooth surface paper. I actually like the the rougher paper to pencil with, but for inking, it's nowhere near as nice. So I use uh, I use this paper. It's Strathmore 200 series Bristol. I get it in a pack. It comes pre-lined. You can just get it on Amazon. Um, and yeah, it, it makes a big difference. Now, I, and I've, I've showed you guys this before a bunch of times, but I use Micron 01. 
Uh, I really like Molotovs, which some of you might remember. I don't have any right now, but somebody gave me a link where I can get some. I haven't, I've been so busy, but I'm gonna get some, they're the best. Uh, this is a Pentel brush pen. Uh, I've got a, this is a, a bit of a broader tip and then I've got a finer tip. The truth is, I can't even tell the difference. And then I've got, these are Zebra extra fine pens. Um, not my favorite, but very good. And my favorite, I just got a bunch of them. I finally ordered some more. These are Tombos, and this is the uh, hard tip. So it's not hard, but it's stiffer. Was it, Brain Games wants to know, was it learning to draw without rotating your canvas difficult? Did you learn it from the beginning, or did you learn it later? Uh, I don't draw without rotating my canvas. I, I what, there's like some myth out there that people think that you don't rotate your canvas. Well, it's because when I do these, I don't like spinning it all around because it makes it hard to follow, but actually it makes it harder for me to draw too. You, you turn your page all the time. All the time. Right now, yeah, I would be turning, like for his jaw, I would have turned it, but you know, just so you guys aren't watching me turn the paper all over the place, I, I'm not doing that as much as I can, but no, it's not a skill that I've worked on developing or like value one way or another. Turn it, your page if you need to. Uh, yeah, okay. It'd make my life easier, it really would. I'm just saying that to everybody. Oh, we have another super chat. Y'all, oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, SCS Powerlifting. Hi, Meredith. Hi. Dave, do you think it's better to start over with a drawing or keep going with what's done when adding color like Copic markers? Do you think it's better to start over with a drawing? Yeah, or like, do you, like I think it's similar to what you do with your painting. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, yeah, okay. You know what? If I paint with acrylic, I always print it out and then paint from a, a copy. And I do that. I think if I was more of a confident painter, I wouldn't do it. But um, I and if I ever sell the original, I just sell it with the with the pencils included. But yeah, um, I, I have things fall apart on me enough that I don't I don't go on the original. Henry Jeremick says, Dave, back in high school, I drew the Iron Maiden Killers covers and sold it many times. Is that the cover you drew as well? Oh, yeah. I drew a lot of Iron Maiden. <laughs> I drew a lot of Eddie. Absolutely. Um, and then your your 13-year-old DPLA art, you would be admired how to really nice things to say on a 13-year-old, by the way. Oh yeah, yeah. I saw his work on Discord, and uh, I was stunned. It was really, very impressive. Um, dude, power, Dave. How do you approach drawing veins? Uh, you know what? I'm not going to answer that right now because we will be getting there in just a minute, and I will show you. Perfect. Well, then moving on to Michael J. McCurdy. Question: In general, how many comic book pages? Do you have to draw before you become professionally proficient? <coughs> Screenwriters say you have to write a thousand pages before you start to get good. Uh, you know, it reminds me of Malcolm Gadwell with his 10,000 hours. You know, I'm sure some of you guys might have heard of that. And I, I think there's truth to that. But I think at the same time, there's there's just factors involved like talent and aptitude. And, and uh it makes it very difficult to answer that question because it's different for everybody. The good news though is that I really do believe that uh, talent only gets you so far, you know? So I wouldn't worry about, you know, did I manage to make this work by the time I was, you know, 16 years old, like Joe Matarera, or is it taking me longer, like Mark Bagley, or, you know, it takes the time that it takes and you have to just be patient with yourself and push yourself Put all the work into it you can, make sure you're learning smart, and be patient. So we have two super chats. The first one is from Harold P. Thank you so much, Harold. Yes, thank you very much, Harold. He says, fans of you both. Thank, uh, you. thank you. And then the next one is from Sketchbook Ninja. Aloha, Meredith and David. I just wanted to know, what is the best way to draw something in motion, like throwing a punch? Oh, that is, and thank you very much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. That is a really hard question to answer because it's um, it's a, it's a, a bit of a tough topic. Some of it, a big part of it, is um, center of gravity. When you push your center of gravity over, 
you um, create a momentum in whichever direction somebody is coming off of their center of gravity. So that's part of it. The other part of it is um, you want to have tension. So it, like, for instance, you've got, here's a, here's somebody punching. Here's my hand. And he's punching. And you can see that it doesn't look like a strong punch at all because there's no force coming behind there that you can really see. But if I, you know what, let me zoom in for this. Hold on. Let me get to my thing that'll zoom. So I don't think this is, okay. So he's punching, but it doesn't look like there's anything really going on there. Whereas if I, have the same hand. I wouldn't normally start with the hand, I guess, but and I I put the whole body into it. Now he's got force coming all the way up from his foot in an arc all the way down into his hand and he's he's pushing his whole body into that motion. And that's something you really pick up from looking at other artists, looking at sports, those kinds of things. It's very, very important to get a sense of, and you can feel it in your own body when you, even if you don't do the motion, I would recommend you try it, but you can, you can feel tension and try to feel that in your art. You can, you know, human bodies only move in there are constraints to how far you can move. I can only stretch my arms back so far. So when I push them all the way back, there's tension there and I can feel that. And that's the kind of tension you want to get the energy in your bodies. You can feel like that. It gives you a spring and energy and you really want to try to push that. So don't have a, an almost punch or an almost run or whatever. You want it to be full out. Everything is extended. So that's, that's my philosophy on that one. So a few more super chats. One I missed earlier on from Brain Games, which was about drawing without rotating the canvas. So hopefully we answered that one for you that Dave absolutely does rotate his canvas. And Jordan Seward, another super chat. So thank you both Brain Games and Jordan Seward. And Jordan says, spin it if you, if you want to, it's okay. <laughs> right. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you, Jordan. And then we have another super chat, hold on here, from Curtis Simmons. Thank you, Curtis. Thank you very much, Curtis. Thank you for the super chat. Hey, Mr. Finch, I know you're really humble, but I think you're one of the most influential imitated comic artists of recent. Any perspective tips? I, well, thank you very much, really. I, I really appreciate that. Um, perspective tips. Oh, pers perspective, like drawing in perspective. Is that's I'm assuming maybe that's what he means? Assuming that that's what you mean, and if it's not, please let us know. But uh, I just did a video on perspective. I did one point perspective because it's easier. Um, it just to, it, you know, it's got one point, so it's it's easier. I'm gonna do more, but um, I would really recommend taking a look at that one. It's building some perspective. Uh, it's really the way that I do it, and it can be a little bit daunting to look at at first, I think, versus some things, but. Uh, trust me when I tell you that it is easier than drawing figures. It really, really is. It looks harder if you haven't done it and you're looking at it as something, you know what, this is I'm kind of missing this in my art and I haven't really approached it because I mean, figure drawing is such a huge subject in and of itself, but uh, I wouldn't be afraid of it. All right. Um, I was way back in the beginning, but I feel like I'm getting too far behind in the chat, so I'm going to skip farther on into the chat. <laughs> <coughs> so I'm drawing his chest right now and I realize I'm way out here too far so I'm fixing it oh. here we have another super chat from Nick Keys thank you very much Nick for the super chat thank you so much hi Dave and Meredith how do you get your work in front of someone that can hire you there are a few ways to do that and it is it's more challenging than it used to be, uh, really. I, I don't know why that had to have happened. I mean, I don't know, but um, go to conventions. Conventions are a great place to run into all kinds of people from all over, uh, especially if, if you go. You Marvel and DC often will have uh, like a talent search. Those are great. 
Um, but also smaller companies that won't pay as well, frankly, but that's okay because that's what it is to start out. You know, you have to be willing to take a, a few sacrifices and you know, it's an investment in your future and it's, it's a future of drawing pictures all day for a living. So it's worth it. But uh, yeah, I'd say approach smaller companies, show them your work and you know, any reputable small company that's putting out quality work is gonna wanna see what you have because they're looking for people and it's worth it for them to invest if they can find somebody that they, they think they can um, grow with. So the opportunities are out there. Uh, another way, if you can't, well, and you know, unfortunately conventions are a little tough right now, so that's a, a problem. Um, I would say, uh, if you are online, definitely be a part of Facebook. I'm a little hypocritical on that one because I never really use it. But um, Meredith, my wife, who's helping with the, the chat, uh, uses it to find artists. Um, she's working with a company right now. I can't talk about it, but they've got a lot of stuff going on. They're looking for artists. You know, uh, well, they will be soon. Not yet. Not yet. They will be. And other companies always are. And if you uh, keep abreast of, of their activity, you can find when people are looking and submit, you know, and if it's right, uh, that's how you can get started. Now, uh, once you're once you're in and you're working, you start developing relationships, people trust you, it makes it much easier to keep getting work. And people say, you know, it's who you know. Um, that is true in the sense that companies are very, very reluctant and afraid to hire somebody that might just disappear, which happens quite a bit. So, you know, it's, it's really, I'd be reluctant to, you know, a company that says, oh, you know, we can't pay, but we'll give you exposure. Well, you know, be leery about that. I think you deserve to get paid for your work, but. I'm gonna move the, this along a little bit because we've got a bunch of super chats lined up here. So I wanna to get to their questions too. Okay. First of all, we have a super chat from Gaston L. Mega, Megalenez, Megalenez. I'm sorry if I if I did not say your last name. That was so bad. I also apologize. Yes. And thank you very much for the super chat. That was he just gave us a super chat. So no question from Gaston. Then a question from Tim Adams. I love your work, David. Just curious, how often do you ignore realis realism in favor of it looks cool? Uh, wow, that is a good question. That's actually a that's a great question. A lot. Uh, wherever I can, but at the same time, I want, I'm not trying to draw reality. I, I'm never trying to draw reality, but what I am trying to draw is a believable facsimile, I guess, of reality. And ideally, I want it to be a place where you can look into it and feel like you could be there and be a part of it. And that's, that's really, I think, where comics have it over so many other mediums, because uh, since it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not a movie where you're just passively watching. You're filling in those gaps with your mind. And when the storytelling is really well done, it creates like a, a stronger reality and a stronger sense of presence, I think, than any other medium. And so I really want to make that as good as I can possibly make it. But at the same time, I, I want it to be my own little world. So I, I, don't, I don't worry about reality except for you know a writer will say hey we want you know times square or we want this particular monument or whatever then i'll make it look as real as i possibly can or you know i've had times i had to draw dick cheney now i don't know how many of you remember he was the vice president of the united states a long time ago and he was in a comic he was in ultimate x-men so i had to make it look like him i'm actually i'm not sure if we actually said it was dick cheney but that's who it was anyway so yeah there are times that i have to and i'll tell you right now when i have to do that i trace i cannot copy like i'm no good with likenesses so if i've got to make a likeness what i do is i just put an image up on my computer screen turn the lights off and trace it yep that's the way you do it why fight you know trying to make somebody look like somebody it's it is not my skill set and i don't Jeff Campbell, J. Scott Campbell, is incredible at, at doing uh, caricature. I'm not, so I, I don't try. All right, next super chat is from Jake Carlson. Thank you very much for the super chat, Jake. Thank you so much, Jake. Would an editor, editor hire me to draw three pages a week knowing I'm also a teacher, or would I have to draw four or five pages a week to be hired? Thanks for all that you do to support prospective artists, David. I can say for myself that if you can reliably turn in three pages a week and I can build a schedule around that and I could see not see an editor not being willing to hire you especially like really what they're looking for is a combination of just reliability and quality 
Yeah, I, I 100% second that. That's that's totally true. It's three pages a week is absolutely fine if the quality is there. They like what you're doing, and they know what. Now it means that they're not going to be able to hire you on to do a monthly book, um, and you start today, and the month the book comes out in a month, and you just keep going. That's not going to work. But they might hire you for a six issue mini series. But honestly, but they can build that. They can plan that far enough ahead. And it's not even a, a problem because really any job that you would get right now would be that format so yeah no it, it's not a problem that i i wouldn't even i i wouldn't even let that enter my mind at all like it, that is no problem and then we have another super chat from sketchbook ninja thank you very much sketchbook so ninja and thank you so much thank you both for being available and sharing a piece of your creative brain with all of us aloha aloha to you too and you're so welcome Yes, thank you. I'm, you I'm guessing... You guys are waking me up. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because I have to go to bed at some time. I, I should pull out because I'm, I'm drawing in the okay. figure here and I'm kind of... I forgot I was pulled way in. There we go. We See a little more of the figure here. Uh, another super chat and, from Michael Johnson Curry. Hi, good to see you again, Michael. Um, hi, Meredith. Hey, Dave, did you mention the line of beauty... Oh, you mentioned the line of beauty several times. How do you apply that to normal drawing? I can't seem to make those lines work in my renderings. Um, okay. I'm going to draw a line, uh, like a striation for muscle on his chest. And I'm going to start here and then kind of cut and, and do this. And so that is a bit of a cheat because it's really not a line of beauty. It's, it's kind of my own. I just, I really like jagged lines and i think it makes things look more interesting than just having um just smooth curves so i do that a lot uh, a line of beauty is something that i'm much more likely to use in things like hair and look at this i'm drawing all this hair that's just like single because it's shorter hair but you know i've got it here uh i should be doing it more i'm really i'm falling down on the job there's a bunch there so i use it where it works i tend to like my figures to be more hard edged and jagged so it's not something you would see is prevalently anyway so i wouldn't overthink that too much so yeah i use it all the time but i also i'm for my figure drawing I, and i use it more for women but i i can't say as I'm, I'm actually consciously thinking about it now this is how it goes the more you draw the more you really are not consciously thinking about these things but you do have to think about them and be aware of them in order to learn it and it's it can be a bit of a, a tough contradiction because uh, and here I am trying to, you know, am I off the page a little bit? I'm trying to teach this stuff and I'm trying to show you, you know, this is why you do this and this is why you do that. And I don't remember why I do it. So it's really making me think, you know. All right, we have another super chat from 81 Modus. Thank you very much, 81 Modus. Thank you for the super chat. He wants to know who would be on your Mount Rushmore of comics? Um, Mark Silvestri. Uh, I'm looking at my, <laughs> all my shelves are over here. I'm looking uh, Greg Capullo right now. Um, Vignola. Mike Vignola, Kevin, Kevin Nolan, thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know my list. Bernie uh, Wrightson. Bernie Wrightson. Um, Simon Bisley. Simon Bisley, Dale Keown, Travis Trest. Uh, There's not enough room on Mount Rushmore. Yeah, Carlos Pacheco. Um, yeah, there is Mobius. not enough room. What's that? Mobius. Mobius, yeah, Eduardo Rizzo, uh, Frank Miller, um, yeah, Joe Mad. It's a long list, and I'm I'm missing people right now that are like uh, I love and you know, but I guess yeah, Mount Rushmore is what four or five heads, so I've already gone too far. Ask a Canadian. All right, Cheyenne Raju. Hey David, have you thought about streaming on Twitch? It has a great community of helpful artists and a lot of features that I'm sure YouTube did, that I'm pretty sure YouTube doesn't have. I, yes, we've been talking about it. Yes, and I actually originally planned on streaming on Twitch, and the thing that stopped me was uh, all you guys are here. So I, I didn't know if that would be a mistake to do that, like if it would be uh, you know difficult for you guys to come onto Twitch, if that would be harder. Um, cause I know it, it has some features that I really like and I've, I've watched some artists on Twitch and I thought, you know, it was, it was great, you know, and there, yeah. So I, I think maybe at some point I might do it, but 
You guys all have to promise to come. Um, so another question pertaining to that line of beauty from Ferris Jabbar. Hi Dave and Meredith, when you decide to throw down a line, I jagged or a line of beauty, does it shape depend mostly in relation to the line adjacent to it or the overall picture? Hmm. I don't know that it pertains to the overall picture. I mean, it does in the sense that, you know, pictures are like a, a combination of all the decisions that you make. If I go much more jagged with all the lines on my on my forms, then I'm going to have a more jagged picture. So it is re in relation to the overall picture. Um, but yeah, it is also so much of the detail you do is has to be balanced with the other detail that's there. That is a good question and a tough one to answer. And I don't even know that there's really an appropriate answer. Or at least not that's popping into my head. All right, so uh, I'm gonna start doing a couple of veins here. And so to start, I'm just, now if I was using a pencil, I would just be using my pencil, but I'm using my thin pen here. I'm gonna draw a vein along his bicep, up around his shoulder here. I do this all the time. I'm gonna give it like a little vein branching off here, maybe another one here. He's got a vein kind of wrapped around his um, forearm there, you know. Here's another little vein and maybe a little bit there. I'm gonna give him another one on this bicep. And I don't even have my lighting worked in yet, so I'm going very thin with it. And the important thing is, and you know what, maybe I should even show you this on a different piece of paper just to really get the, I'm gonna show you, okay. We're gonna go over here. I'm gonna zoom in again. And veins are negative space drawing. That's really all they are. So I've got my form and I'm gonna draw a vein around it. And so my light, if I've got the light coming from here, would hit it like this. So what I don't wanna do ever is draw that side of the vein. Now I do when I'm rendering a lot of times, I'll render out and then I'll kind of dot it like that. That can work because it's not really a line and it, it works, but, and then I'll put another vein here, I'm connecting it. And it's, it's like a raised shape on top of what I originally had. I'll put another one here. And in order to make that really kind of round, I should cut into it just like that. That's really, in order to make it work, and you, you want to make sure not to, you know what? Let's connect it. In order to make it work, you want to make sure that you're not getting too carried away with your thickness and, and you know, you're keeping it kind of within a reasonable proportion to what you already had. So that's, that's really all there is to it. And I'll show you as I light it, but that's that's what it comes down to. Did somebody, did I, I just made that one up myself. What? what was going on? That wasn't even, I guess it was an early question. All right, I'm rambling. Um, the Art Jedi wants to know how you keep your early line work light because mine can start to get dark and messy. And I'm gonna just go back to the beginning because I think I missed a question. Uh, well, the way that I do that, first of all, I use a 2H lead uh, in my pencil that's inherently just light anyway and then i press very very lightly when i'm sketching uh and then when i'm actually drawing in my lines i do press too hard i can't help it but um i also use my kneaded eraser and you can see there well maybe you can't even see it now but there's pencil underneath here that i can still see a little bit just a shadow of it and that's all i need in order to be able to place everything on top and so um <clears throat> I would say another thing to think about too is uh, I did this really in two stages. I roughed in the figure and then I did this kind of simple cartoon of my figure. But it, when you're starting and you're not as comfortable, uh, and I did this for, and I still do it if I'm really uncomfortable, I'll draw in a rough shape and then I'll erase that down and then I'll do another layer where I get all my detail in, still sketchy and still loose but it's more in there and then when I do this stage here I've got more to work from. So if I need it I'll do that. All right, we're lighting. Here we go. All right. Um, tips and proportion. I feel like you. I'm going. I went all the way back to the beginning to go hit some more questions. J. Bobby Art says, "Do you have any tips on how to draw the correct proportions for your characters?" I feel like you said you were going to do maybe a tutorial on that, like talking about. Yeah. Proportional drawing. I will do that. Um, now, I, okay, I would say just to answer your question right now, yeah. uh, 
uh, get how to draw comics in Marvel way uh, by uh, Stan Lee and John Buscema, and there's a really good section on it. It gives you good comic book proportions. Uh, so you know you have a regular person that's about six heads, six and a half heads maybe high, whereas a comic person is more like eight and a half or even nine heads high, depending on the style that you want to go with. And so what you need to do is learn how to, um, and it's it's very easy. You draw your figure and then based on your head size, you'll have about two heads in the shin, two heads in the upper leg and, you know, look at the book. It's very helpful that way. And then uh, um, you will still, when you're drawing at times, lose your proportion. And I do sometimes too, truthfully, it happens. But the more you do it, the more natural it becomes. And it, it it's, uh, it gets easy, easier. Oh, zoom. I think you have to change the zoom back on your camera. Am I zoomed in or zoomed out? Yeah, but I'm doing. Okay, shit. never mind. Um, I have a few more super chats now from Couch Doodles. Lo Thank you, Couch Doodles. Couch Doodles says love and respect from Georgia. I think Georgia is GA. Fragaboom. And King Everett has another question. Thank you, King Everett. Uh, well, first of all. Well, that's Dan Fraga, and oh, is it? Yeah, it's well, Dan I wasn't Fraga. Sure, but I'm like, yeah, I have not seen. And thank you so much for coming, and thank you for the super chat, Dan. It's you know not necessary. I really appreciate it. That's great. It's just it's great to have you here. Um, yeah, Dan. Um, I don't think we've actually talked in person in ten years. It's been too long, and uh, I. I don't know if you remember this, Dan, but my my convention, the one where I finally got work, I had talked to you, you were at a desk and you were looking at my artwork and and you said, uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. You know, you could be uh, on this side of the desk soon. And I thought, wow, you know, I could not imagine, you know, and it worked out. I managed to get work with Top Cow at that show. So, you know, I'll always remember that. And, you know, you hanging around Top Cow and hanging out with Mike. Yeah, there's a lot of history. We've got a lot of history together. So thank you so much for coming. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. Um, so the next super chat was King Everett. He wants to know if you can turn these to time lapse. And he says, PS, zoom in for detail, please. Let me come in a little bit here. You know what? I need a better camera. No, no. <laughs> Because when I zoom in, I lose detail. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just like, I, I'm crying. My, my, the credit card's crying. Uh, and then we have another super chat from SCS Powerlifting. Uh, in on Twitch, I follow Jim Lee there. Is there a character that you have not drawn but want to? Uh, Thanks again for the yes. Second oh, yes. Super chat, Thank SCS. you very much. Uh, yeah, there, I mean, there are a few characters. I've drawn, like, I've, I've drawn Punisher. Um, I did some covers with Punisher just lately, and I drew him years ago, I think in, in Moon Knight, Moon Knight. But I've never been able to draw the Punisher book. I would love to, it'd be a blast. I would love to draw a Ghost Rider book. Uh, so it's all characters for the most part that I've drawn. I just never really gotten to, you know, really sink my teeth into and have like a run and, and you know, put a statement on one way or another, so. And then we have another chat, super chat from Mike F. Thanks so much, David. These are so great. Uh, thank you very much, Mike. Thank you so much. Thanks for the super chat. Thanks for coming and, you know, the encouragement. And then we have a super chat from Ricky the Green Man. Hi, David and Meredith. How do you manipulate facial features to create a sense of age? For example, youthful or old with it still looking like the same characters. Ooh. Love, R. And thank you for the thank you for the super chat and thank you for the great question. Um, okay, here we go. You're gonna be here all night, Meredith. Just to let you know. So somebody's gotta put the kid to bed at some point. Here's my face. And you'll notice this is highly detailed and accurate. It, it, tell me I'm not coming off the page. I can't even see. I can't see. I'm not. Okay. Okay. So to make them older, the first thing you would do is give them some lines here and here. 
give him some more, you know, a bit of a jowl line. Here's his chin. People get a little jowly here. And a little bit of that, you know, jowly neck there. You got lines under the eyes here, some forehead wrinkles, and some wrinkles coming out like this. And honestly, the rest is detail. It really is. This is what it, oh, and another thing is that you might want to make the nose a little bit bigger and the ears just a little bit bigger because they keep growing as you get older. So there you go. There he is older. That is all there is to it. I know that looks terrible and it's, you know, but um, that's really all there is to it. And he's the same face. I didn't have to change much. So that is how I do it. Oh, you never answered the time lapse question. Oh, sorry. If you would do these in time lapse. Is it pot, like to post these, like repost these as, as like a sped up version of the live stream? Is that? I will look into it. I don't know because it's I mean, on. You repost the live stream. I don't see why you couldn't just increase the time, the time and just. I'll look into it. I'm sure. Kind of a good way to do it. Yeah. Great idea. I think it's a great idea. You know what? I know Jimmy Reyes redid my intro and he took it right off of YouTube and fixed it up. So if he could do that, then it's it's got to be doable. Yeah, so, sure yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. It's a nice way for me to have content without having to make you content. Make more content. <laughs> I just want you people to know he puts a lot of time and effort into doing all these tutorial videos and getting ready for the chat. Because um, I think you can tell Dave loves teaching and uh, sharing what he's learned with um, up and coming and aspiring artists, so. Yeah, I missed this for a long time. I really did, and you know, it's it's been very fulfilling. <coughs> so, um, I, there's a question that somebody asked a few times about the doomsday artist. Is that Gary Frank? No. The Doomsday Artist. Um, no, I've lost it. it was, he asked the question multiple times. Can we go back and find it? If I had to think of a like an artist that is iconic for Doomsday, it would be Dan Jurgens because he did The Death it. of Superman. Um, you know you can never find it when you want to find it. Yep. Never mind. Moving right along. Uh, David, Tomic Art was, welcome back, Tomic. David was drawing our muscles hard when starting. Uh, yes, and thanks for coming back, Tomic. It's good to see you here. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, it, it's, you have to learn so many things to, to really make it all fit together uh, if your basic form and you've been working so much on your your simple gesture drawing so I think you're making huge headway and what I like about what you're doing right now especially is that you're drawing all sorts of different poses and poses you know in an environment using perspective for it you're not cheating and it's so easy to just cheat and you know draw the same basic things over and over again and I have to say that while yeah anatomy is it's a whole thing to learn on, on its own and it's it's a job uh, if your basic shapes aren't working then nothing is working so I'd say you are on the right track with what you're doing was couch doodles Dan Fraga yeah he says you can shoot with a second camera using um, time lapse lapse it or something like that like is there a program um i think i'd have to like point a different camera at it then or? running laps it you can shoot with a second camera running laps it oh okay well i'm gonna have that i'll look so into then dan is paying my credit card bill next month <laughs> thank you you dan. all heard it there <laughs> uh, okay um there's so many questions now. Jordan Sieber, how do you pick a good spot for your vanishing point? Uh, 
it, well, it depends on what you're looking for for a shot. If you if you're if you want to look straight down a hallway, then obviously your perspective point is going to be right in front of you. It's going to be a one point perspective. If you are um, looking at uh, a block of buildings and you want to see down this street and a little bit down this street, then you're looking at it would be like here we go again. All right. So let's say I want, and it, it just depends on the shot. If I want to look down at something, um, let's say I'm looking directly down at it, then my horizon would be way up here because I'm up here, that's my eye, and it would be down here. And so I would have a vanishing point because it's everything comes it gets larger as it comes cl closer to you. <laughs> so I would have a vanishing point here, and then, this would be my eye line here. I'm going to put another vanishing point here and then just go straight across. And there's my floor. So there's my two vanishing points to be looking directly down at, you know, like the top of a box that would be below. Uh, if it's above, it would be the opposite. If you want to see, you know, a box from more like this angle, then you would have one vanishing point that's here and one vanishing point that is here and your horizon would be just about right through there. And so I, I would say, don't worry about your vanishing points so much as worry about what you want for a shot. So, you know, you have to decide what your shot is about and then plan your vanishing points to, to achieve that. And uh, all of that is correct, but I'm gonna say it's, it's a very difficult thing figuring that out and figuring out, you know, how to plan your perspective and get it all working. Uh, if you haven't really done it, it's daunting. And the way that I did it, is um, I would look at at artists that did it really well and I knew basically in my head the kind of shot that I wanted what I was looking for and so I would just flip through until I found a shot I'm not looking for it, it could be they could have drawn you know the inside of a, an office and I want like a boiler room it doesn't matter it wasn't the detail or the shot itself but what it was was the way that they planned the perspective and I, I just imagined my scene in that perspective and I could just take the comic and kind of work out with the ruler where they put their points and that's how I did it I didn't do that long because I mean that's an arduous process but that was a huge huge help for me to say okay you know and now I, I could look at it and say I um, I know what I, I have is gonna hold together because it did for this artist you know so that's what I would do it's uh, it's a good way to go so did we have a super chat from your moderator for Eric Oh, thank says, you, Eric. Thank you so much, Eric. Very, a very nice super chat. He says, thanks, Dave and Meredith, for all the hard work to make the streams and videos happen. Add this to the video making equipment fund. Hee <laughs> hee. Now, I, he's making me feel guilty. I'm going to have to stop complaining about your credit card bills. Oh, man. I feel like I should be paying super chats to Eric right now. Thank you very much, Eric. <clears throat> and for any of you that are on Discord, you'll know Eric from that, and he's really done an incredible job of making that a uh, good and positive community. So, thank you, Eric, for that. See, I'm the one that keeps them in line at home and Eric's keeping them in line on Discord. Yeah. All right, but I'm gonna start at the very bottom of the chat. Um, Matt Lakin. Hi, Dave. I love your art on New Avengers and Ultimate X-Men. Thank you, Matt. You have a slanted desk. I hate leaning over my drawings. Uh, I have a slanted desk. It's not really slanted. And the truth is, uh, when I'm not doing this, I work on the couch with a lap board. I, I get tired sitting and drawing at a desk. And I'm, I'm not getting any younger. And I just find I'm, I get uncomfortable after a while. So uh, I, I do this for these drawings. And most of my drawings I just do uh, on the couch. And so then I've got the board, you know, right up here. It's, it's nice. And that's actually part of the reason why uh, I, I switched from using a quill. I, I found it, it had added benefits, you know, um, not having ink spilling and things like that. Um, and it's more natural for me because I just, I drew for so long. I think if you're drawing with ink, it's, it's easier to work with these kinds of tools. Well, I'm using a brush. I mean, this is similar. This would be the same as if you were using a dip brush, but my other tools, it's easier. But um, also it means that I can sit away from a desk and I don't have to worry about uh, spilling ink everywhere. Much more efficient. We have another super chat from Sheldon Martin. Thank you, Thank Sheldon. You so much, Sheldon. He says, hey, David, this is a $500 super chat. Just kidding. 
Thanks for reading these, Meredith. <laughs> You're welcome. I do, I do my best. Actually, this is kind of, Dave is so busy. Um, we don't always get to spend as much time together as I would like. It, and I'm sure we all feel this. We get pulled in so many different directions with our family, with our friends, and with our work, and our kids. And so these Sunday night live streams are fun because I get to sit here and, and hang out with Dave, too. So And not just sit there and watch him draw. or Well, I'm going to do that anyway. But, um, yeah, so it's been, it's been nice for us to think. Yeah. yeah. I think we're both enjoying these. So. We're hanging out and wa not watching TV. That's right. We're hanging out. It's, yeah, you get into routine. It's very easy to get into a it is. post dinner routine that doesn't necessarily involve um, spending time together in a way that's interactive. Yep. So, that. all right. Moving on to your actual questions and not me, you know, rambling. Losada wants to know any tips on what to put in a comic book portfolio. Uh, you know, we had this one, I think, last week. And uh, what I said then is you want three to five pages. I think three is enough, really. But you need to make sure that within those three pages, you have action. Uh, you have some superheroes, depending on the kind of work that you want. If you want to do superheroes, obviously you want to have superheroes. If that's not what you're doing, then you don't. But you want to show that you can draw all the kinds of things that they would want to hire you to draw. So if you're approaching Marvel, you want to show that you can draw their characters. Now, the truth is they don't actually care if you if you give them a portfolio with Marvel characters. They're, you know, they don't care. If you have all DC characters, but they look great, it, they know what Superman is supposed to look like and what all these, you know, Green Lantern and all these characters are supposed to look like. And if you can pull that off and they move and, and work properly for those characters, they know you can do it with their characters too. So I wouldn't worry about that at all, but you do want to make sure that you show that you can you can uh, move those characters in a dynamic way, and you want to show that you can have your figure your characters communicate with each other with emotion and believability in quieter scenes. So you have a little bit of that in there for sure, and. Uh, um, backgrounds you want to make sure you know have uh, some cars maybe you know i think a great portfolio would be um captain america and another character and they're just in street clothes and uh they're walking down the street and there's cars and regular people and somebody's eating a bagel and that kind of thing and then all of a sudden uh, a bunch of cars fly up in the distance and they turn around so you already have you've got regular people and you've shown that you can draw that you've shown you can draw cars in a street in a believable city and now you're showing that you can you can transition that into an action scene the cars fly up in the air and then you have maybe like the rhino or something blast toward them and now they're fighting the rhino you do that for two pages that would be a good portfolio there you go. i don't need to write a script dave just scripted it for you but that is the kind of thing that they want to see, that you can do all those things. And you will actually, you know, uh, if you don't show them all those things, <coughs> you know, sometimes if they really like what you're doing, they'll say, you know what, maybe try this and they'll give you a sample to, you know, try out. But uh, you want as few barriers as you can get between yourself and, and getting a job. So I would say definitely choose your script wisely and make sure that it has uh, all the elements that, that you see in comics buildings rooms expressions clothing cars now i mean it doesn't have to have absolutely everything like if you draw a good airplane i'm sure you can draw a car but yeah so i just have to say because we have another super chat but before i say thank you to robert willis for super chat but i do say thank you robert for your super chat i want to let it, everybody know that we have hit over 600 people watching right now which no kidding I think it, that this is the first week we've had over 600 people watching. So wow, thank you very thank much, you everybody all of you who's watching. We yeah, really appreciate that. And now we'll roll, roll right into Robert's question, a super chat question. What's up, Dave? Love your art. Was wondering if you have always been this fast. Uh, thank you very much for the super chat, Robert. I, I appreciate it very much. No, not at all. I have not always been fast. Uh, I, I remember at Top Cow, I would spend like, you know, a week on a pinup and um, it, it was a real problem. And then uh, I got some of my first. Now, 
I started in a studio where I could spend a week on something and they would just put up with it for, you know, for a limited amount of time. They would put up with that while I was learning. But then when I got my first job, it it was solicited, it had a deadline, it had to happen. And so I just started um, doing whatever I could do to get it done. So, you know, and that, I, I, I did some really ugly art. I also found, if you give me enough time, usually I can figure out how to draw just about anything adequately enough you know but if i have no time at all and i just have to do it well yeah that's when you really get exposed and so i would say when you're starting working uh you will get exposed but you'll get faster too and you know you just keep making sure to keep growing and don't worry too much about speed like i someone asked um earlier on if you know three pages a week is enough it is enough if they know that so but yeah uh i wasn't always so fast I had to learn how to be fast from there was I remember years ago I was in um, uh, Australia it was my first time and I this is in 2004 and I thought well I'm on the other side of the world I can get away with whatever and I was behind on Avengers and I thought ah, you know they're never gonna catch me here next thing you know it's like three o'clock in the morning and my hotel phone rings and it's Tom Brevoort, who's the editor. And he tracked me down all the way in Australia and said, where are my pages? What do you do? Anyway, uh, yeah, he, I mean, he's he's a great editor. He wasn't so tip, but yeah, he was not happy. <laughs> so uh, yeah, next thing you know, I, I, I was there. Actually, I went with my mother. <laughs> we did that trip together. And- uh, That was a pre day. It was, yeah. And so, yeah, she went shopping and I was stuck in the room drawing pages and I drew those pages fast. We have another super chat, Dave, from Oliver Ortez. Thank you, Oliver, for the super chat. He says, thank you, Meredith and David, for making these videos. It's such a treat to see an accomplished artist at work and sharing with his fans. Meredith being a part of this makes it even more special. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Well, thank you for the first part of that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. You can't get away from me. I've followed you down to the basement. Uh, I couldn't do it without you. Uh, buddy Buck, would you say art is therapeutic for you? For me, it is always such a good outlet for stress. Yes, David, sometimes when he's really on a deadline, I tick him off because then he draws faster. It's <laughs> not true, but you do, you do use it. Like What she means is when I'm on a deadline and she ticks me off, which, you know, would happen anyway, <laughs> I draw faster. <laughs> I tick her off too, probably more. That's part of welcome nerd life. Um, uh, DPLA Art wants to know if we're going to do giveaways from, of the art from the streams. Right now, I have to be honest, Meredith is a multitasker. So Dave has a list of commissions. So I've slid some commissions into these art streams so that I can get the commissions done. But that doesn't mean that there won't be a time where we do an art giveaway from um, the streams. But right now, I'm just trying to get all the work done in in the most efficient manner possible. Yeah, you know, and I have thought about it because I would really like to do that. Yeah, I think that would be great. I think it, we'll like we'll maybe do a, an anniversary kind of thing. We, yeah, because it's it like feel like an everyday kind of thing. It feels like a hey, we've been doing this for you know six months or hey we have a thousand people watching how about we do that if we have a thousand people watching i don't think that's fair though because the people that are watching now can't control that i know that's i think we, you know we'll do it for you know, how do we do it though you know it's a tough thing to do like we will think six, about it 600 names into a hat you know what we'll we'll have to think about it but we will do it somehow and i want it to be fair and i don't want it to be something because I, I hear what you're saying it would be you know well, i think like an anniversary thing yeah but i i don't want to say hey you know something that you know the no, people that are here first no, uh you're not wrong there yeah all right we have another super chat from ricky the green man thank you ricky thank you so much he wants to know what has the largest impact on changing the way a face looks Examples, the spacing between the eyes, the line weight of the eyebrows, the shape of the nose. Um, I think all of those things, really though, the biggest thing that will have an impact on how a shape looks is the overall shape of the head. 
you, you know, if you have a really broad face or if you have a really long face, you know, um, and that's like basic cartooning. I could draw the same face on a, a face that I stretch out quite a bit and it looks like a really long, thin, kind of gaunt person. Um, so I would say that has the biggest impact, but all of those things do. Uh, I do think it, there are some artists that are really great at drawing different characters with like different noses and different features in such a way that they really look individual. I don't so much have that ability and um, it's, a, it's a struggle. So I, I don't know that I'm, and you know, actually I'll tell you what I do for like background characters. I was doing this on Batman uh, and this is just between us. I was looking at uh, Disney animation for different characters. I looked at um, Tangled. Tangled, yep. A lot of Tangled for Gotham Girl. Um, and I, I looked at, what's the one with the, the big robot? Big Hero 6 or whatever? Is that, anyway, oh, yeah, Isaac a lot of background characters from that. Incredible character. Yeah, so I, I was doing that a lot. And uh, I mean, those are the greatest artists in the world at drawing really great looking caricatures and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I stole from the best. All right. Mega City Patrol. How do you make a page of talking people interesting to look at? Um, I try to vary the camera angle as much as possible. Okay, there are actually, there are a few ways, just baseline, that you can do this. And it really does help. And number one is don't use all the same camera angle, of course. But also, if you have like five panels on a page, don't draw panel one. You've got two figures, and they're about that big on a page. And then the next panel, they're that big. And then the next panel, they're that big. You want to draw like a bigger panel. You'll have a big head and really get in there because it's like a maybe somebody's thinking something emotional or whatever. And then pull right out. You can even do like a silhouette. And, you know, just try to vary your shots so you're not just drawing the same shot. But really, for any kind of page, whether it's people talking or it's an action page, you don't want to draw panel after panel of people that big on a page, exactly that big. You want to make them small, look down on them, make them huge, vary up your sizes. Um, do, 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 do. Rockin Records, what's your advice for character perspective, angling, foreshortening, etc.? I know you just did a foreshortening video, so that's a... I did. It was a bit of a quickie one, uh, and I only covered arms. I just did one arm, so I think there's a lot more that I could say about that, but I would definitely check that one out. Um, uh, figures work just like anything else in in perspective and uh, perspective is all about taking shapes basic shapes and making sure and seeing them from you know the angle of, of the viewer and keep that in mind so if you learn how to draw cubes and cylinders are tougher i fake it uh you know and there are actual proper ways to draw cylinders in space, you know, uh, you use like a, a a square in perspective, and then you draw a, a, like a cross through it, and there's like this whole thing. I don't do any of that because I don't have time, so I just fake it. And I certainly wouldn't do that with a figure either. But it is the same concept. Uh, I would say look at the the uh, for shortening video. I will have more on that, but that definitely covers quite a bit of it. All right, we have another super chat from William Caldrini. Thank you, William, for the super Thank chat. You so much, William. As a fan, were there any stories or storylines that you wished you could have drawn? And just what stories would you have loved to be a part of? Uh, basically, every time somebody does something that, you know, does really well, I'm like, man, why couldn't I have done that? <laughs> so, Long yeah. Halloween. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Although, Tim... You know, but then I would just want to be Tim Sale. That's right. Or I could do, uh, you know... Um, Lobo, but then I would, well, you know, I would still want to do Lobo anyway, but I would love to do like some of the stuff that Simon Bisley did, but then I would just want to be Simon Bisley, you know? So yeah, uh, but yeah, no, there are, there are a few. I, I did um, Moon Knight ages ago and I have no regrets about that. I wouldn't change it. But at the time we were talking about World War Hulk. It wasn't called World War Hulk yet. I don't know what they were calling it. anyway. And I thought it sounded, uh, I don't know. 
I wasn't feeling it. And so I said no. And then it came out and it turned out to be an incredible book. I did covers for it, you know, but I, yeah, I could have done that whole book. It was a huge hit. And, you know, so I regret not doing that, but then I did Moon Knight. So I don't, so yeah, there's always, it's, there are always choices. And, you know, then there are just artists that, that kill you on something too. Like, you know, um, uh, there are things I think, yeah, I would, I would love to have been able to do this book instead of whatever artist, but I, I couldn't touch what they did with it. So, so we have another super chat from Guy One and Guy Two. He says, "Your channel has blown up, while mine is still stuck." Oh, Guy. Guy One and Guy Two. Gu guys. <laughs> guys. Well, I will say. I've been drawing comics for a long time. Also, you know what really helped? Uh, I started. I feel the... like your sense of rhyme, though. Yeah. That was great. I started the channel like six years ago and then never posted anything. So there's the secret. Yeah. <laughs> it's just let your channel post a few videos and then walk away from it for six years. Yeah. That actually, it really did help. It did help though because uh, when I posted six years ago, I didn't really get any views at all. Nobody knew I was on there, and I wasn't doing much social media, so I, I wasn't promoting it really. I'm way off the page. I apologize. And uh, you know, I'm going to pull out for a bit because we've been in for a while. Yeah, you've been kind of tight. There we go. There, yeah, see the whole picture just a bit there. Um, and yeah, so it meant that when I started posting now, I already had some subscribers, so notifications went out and it made a big difference. It certainly did. But you know, I do hope that your channel takes off. Uh, it's it's a really rewarding thing, especially just, you know, feeling like you have a connection with people out there, which, um, you know, drawing pictures in, in the basement, uh, you don't always feel, so. I wish that for you. I'm sorry, answering a question about perspective grids. Uh, you just did posted a tutorial on perspective grids, so there you go. That's cool. And follow up coming up this week. Yeah, I've actually been watching your tutorial videos, and I mean, if anybody has seen me draw, you should know that I can't draw a round circle. But it's still like I feel like when I watch your your videos, I'm like I could draw. I mean, I can draw. But it, you make it, you break it down in a way that I think is very easy to understand and accessible. So. You're biased, but thank you. I, again, I can't draw, so. Hey, you know what? I, I, you're being too modest. We were talking about it a couple of days ago I while we were having breakfast. I can draw Wonder Woman, a stick figure. Okay, yeah, that was, yeah. But it, we were talking about perspective because they had just done that video and uh, Meredith did a, a quick perspective <laughs> just on a piece of paper. And, you know, she was doing it right. She could do it. So if she keeps it up, next thing you know, I won't have to do my backgrounds anymore. <laughs> we have children for that. Uh, I've been working on that. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. My youngest draws a lot. Not as much as he should. He plays video games a lot. He got into Fortnite. So now they're all into Fortnite. But, yeah, I keep hoping to push him because I want him to do my work for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd love for it to be a career for him too, of course, but you know, really, yeah, I just want to do my work. Um, Christian Benson, would you ever recreate classic comic pages as commissions? Uh, yeah, I would. You know, I, I had a commission years ago to do that, and I just got so busy, we ended up having to cancel commissions, which is the only time I had to do that, and I felt terrible about it, and I would have enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, I would I would love to do that. That'd be a lot of fun. Um, do, 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 do. There, Matt Lacken has been asking about drawing good eyes. So maybe you could do like a face tutorial at some point. Yeah, for sure. Y yeah. Um... And this is where it's it's tough because I I could do heads and show you how to draw heads from a bunch of different angles and the face would be a little bit more simple and you know we just cover the whole process of how to place everything, or I could do you know more like maybe a face from a couple of different angles and really get into how I detail the features and those are kind of two different tutorials and uh, yeah I've been kind of thinking about that like which one would be the better one to do first and I don't know, but. Um, 
I would say, you know, for eyes, there are so many things. It's uh, I would have to do a tutorial to say, you know, this is do this and this and this. But I can say that you really want to think about your lighting and your upper lid. If you have your light coming from above, you want to be thicker than your lower lid, which you could even break. So you don't show the whole line and that makes it look a little bit lit. It's similar to, you know, your nose. If you've got your light coming from here, you would have a shadow on this side of your nose and you wouldn't want to draw a line defining this side of the nose because it's in the light. Same thing with eyes. That makes a big difference. Um, but yeah, I, I will get to covering that. Um, I need more time. We need, this just brings to mind a Dr. Seuss book where we need, Mrs. McCabe had 23 sons and she named them all Dave. We need more of you. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I've been thinking, okay, so I want to do this, this channel for a while and I'm really enjoying it. And so I'm so glad that I have so many ideas for different things. And you guys have given me so many great ideas for things too. Um, actually really most of my ideas are from you guys. Uh, but at the same time, like there's so many of them that are so good and they're necessary and I just can't do them all at once. And it's, it is what it is. I'm going to lay back in the, in the, for some questions because like, I missed a bunch. Uh, Julius Lee, did you have a lot of lead time for Moon Knight? I feel like that was your most detailed work. It was the book that introduced me to comics. Well, thank you, Julius. Um, <coughs> I, I didn't have a huge amount of lead time. No, I had a little bit. Yeah, not that much. I, I think I was really, really fired up to do that book. And that's a factor. I, I mean, I hate to say it, but the fact is that uh, the more I'm into it, the more I just can't put it down. And so I use my time probably better than on some books. Also, I was coming off of Avengers and we were doing, you know, like world spanning, multiple characters everywhere, this whole thing. And I thought, you know, I cannot wait to do a book where I'm drawing one character and I can just pour everything I have into each shot of that character. And so that was the approach that I wanted going into that book. Um, and so, yeah, I, I spent a lot of time on those pages. So it was it was uh, some very late nights on that book. I, I think, you know, Avengers, some of those pages took me, you know, eight, 10, 12 hours, even like it happened, but it was rare. For the most part, I was getting those pages done in about six hours. Uh, on Moon Knight, I think I was more like eight to 10. Like it, it was, I was spending longer for sure. Um, oh, now I lost my question again. I answered a question on the stream. There we go. I'll just fly back. Fly back into the past. Uh, Christopher Palacios. I probably didn't say that right. What type of drawing exercises do you recommend for a 17-year-old artist to focus on? What, what type like of... New, I guess like a teenager who's learning to draw. There's a few questions about for younger kids too, like if I'm 13 or if I'm 15, like for a younger person learning to draw, do they focus on something different than an older person? Somebody who's more. Um, yeah, I, I think, uh, I, I've seen some artists that are very, very young and are really, really uh, unusually well-developed for their age, you know, but uh, I, uh, the youngest I've ever seen somebody really mature to the point where they were ready to work. I think I've heard of like 16, but that's outrageously young. Like I think 18 is, is very, very young. Um, and it seems like most artists, almost everybody breaks in more like 22 if you're going to break in right away. And then, you know, if you're a teacher, for instance, you know, uh, it, it could be much later, you know, but um, I would say, yeah, if you're, you know, 17 years old, that kind of range age wise, um, you want to uh, study and, and learn your anatomy and everything. It makes your art, obviously it, it will help you improve, but also just, uh, just draw and enjoy it. Draw the characters you love and, you know, make sure you keep having fun with it because the last thing you want to do is, um, you know, end up getting a little bit older and you end up, you know, maybe you're not really as happy doing the job that you're doing and you didn't really pursue comics because 
you know it didn't really seem you, you kind of lost interest because you did it too much younger and you know you don't want to lose interest don't burn yourself out So Xander Malcolmson says, is it better to be on contract when you're a pro? And I would say, certainly for most artists and writers, getting a contract is the holy grail, right? Like, because at that point, you know that the company is willing to make a commitment to you. I think as an artist, you're more likely to get a contract these days than a writer would. Uh, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's... Like they're very leery of, of signing uh, writers to contracts now, with the exception of sort of the, the really high end uh, Scott Snyder. Yeah. Um, if you're like an architect of their company yeah. where you're you're deciding the overall, you know, vision of, of where the company's going, then yeah, as a writer, they'll want to sign you to a contract because, you know, you're essential to the direction of the company. Um, and you can be, you know, maybe even their best writer and their most popular writer, and they won't necessarily. You know, it won't be the same because you, you know, not every writer wants to take on that role. So, but my opinion, contracts, uh, I don't like them. I mean, I was under contract with Marvel for years and years, and then DC for years and years. And you know, uh, you figure, okay, well, they'll only really pay you if you're under contract, and otherwise, you don't make as much. But if they really want to work with you, they will anyway. You know, um, I think if you're in the states, you can get health care. So that's that's something but I'm not in the States. Um, I prefer to not be under contract because it means I can do whatever I want. Right now. Right but now. I think you really enjoy being under contract. Yeah, oh yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, for sure. And I, by, by the way, I just thank Dan Fraga because um, he super chatted to let you know um, that he gave Kat his email so that we can contact him. Oh, great. Well, thank you, Dan. Thank you for that. And thanks for the super chat, you know. And, you know, again, thank you for, for coming. Uh, I don't remember what, oh, here we go. Okay, so I'm switching to my Tombow. This is my Tombow brush pen out of focus. Anyway, it's it's a hard brush pen. Dave, One Mighty Art wants to know if you've ever felt overwhelmed while working on an issue. Yeah, yeah, a lot. Uh, and I mean, yes, uh, really, a lot. For sure, yes. but I have found that the solution to that is to just worry about the page that I'm working on. You know, and, I mean, you have to have a plan for the issue. Like, you, I can't, I can't be totally isolated. But yeah, I don't think, geez, I've got to draw like, you know, all this stuff. How am I possibly going to do it? Well, I don't actually have to. I just have to finish a page today, and uh, you know, that's kind of how I overcome that. You know what, we're we're doing detail a little bit anyway, so I'm gonna zoom in. So while you're doing detail, this feels like an appropriate time to ask this question from Gerald Manasala. David, who's the artist that you can recommend on studying and learning hatching like yours? For example, he started studying Travis Sheree for the hair since you mentioned him last week. And also somebody asked about straw hatching, which I have no idea what that is, but I think Mark Silvestri does that. So can we talk a little bit about hatching while you're doing some detail? I don't know what straw hatching is, and I apologize. I'll bet you I, I, I'm sure that you know what you mean, and I would, I'd be like, oh, yeah, if I could see it, but I, I don't know. But I would say um, for hatching, uh, Lanil Yu is phenomenal. I would look at his stuff. I think he's great. Um, obviously, Jim Lee is is, you know, uh, such a originator of so much of this stuff. Uh, another one at the time that was hugely influential and hugely influential in Jim Lee too was uh, Wills Portacio. Uh, his rendering and his shadowing um, was very influential for the whole Homage Studio kind of look. Um, who else? Uh, Why am I drawing a blank? I don't know. I, you know what? I don't really look at anybody for rendering. I call it rendering. We always called it rendering, but yeah, cross hatching. I don't really look at that much for it now. I mean, Travis for sure. Um, uh, 
Hmm. Del Kion, Kevin Nolan. Del Kion. Yeah, Kevin Nolan. I mean, I don't I don't really work in that style, but they're both phenomenal at it. I I did actually pick up a lot from Del Kion for sure. There's no that when I first started dating you, they were names that you would always throw out there with the last dozen influences. Yeah. So we have another super chat from Ricky the Green Man. Thank you, Ricky, for the super chat again. And he wants to know what you would change about the comic book industry if you could. Uh, first of all, it would put me in charge. So I would start there. Nobody wants that. And then it would pay me more. <laughs> I would take that. Uh, yeah, I don't know what I would change. You know what? I, was, I, I wouldn't really just because... I don't know. I think I know how to draw pictures. I don't really, I'm not a business person. I, I'm. I... You know what? I think we would change about the comic industry. That more people would read comics. Yeah, there you go. And that they would be. I kind of miss the days where you would walk into the grocery store and there would be like a spinner rack of some comics. Or yeah. a convenience store. You know what I mean? Like comics have become more of a yeah. And see, meanwhile, boutique kind of thing. Meanwhile, if it was up to me, I would rather see uh, more of a European style market, where you oh, have, you, you know, uh, artists spend like a year on a book, like sixty page novel, and do everything themselves, even the colors. Uh, you know. I'd, I'd love to see something more like it. See, now I, I really have no choice but to turn the page because I can't render it the wrong way from my hand. And you know what? I'm not liking this pen right now. I just got these. I don't know. It's, maybe it's a bad one. I'm gonna. I'm switching. Or maybe I'm su uh, superstitious. Whatever it is. Um. Yeah, I like this better right now. This is a zebra. Um, I think zebra is the brand actually, and it's an extra fine or ultra fine. So, A. Neil has a question. Hi, David. I easily get bored drawing characters because I'm out of ideas and poses. So, what's your advice for creating cool poses that aren't repetitive? Uh, do a lot of gesture drawing from uh, from other artists and pick up their ideas for poses. There are a million of them out there. So, you know, don't draw just the poses that you know. And I, if you're getting bored with the poses you know, you really need to broaden your knowledge base. Now, I mean, it's easy to get bored anyway. It really is. So I, I don't, I don't, I felt like that sounded kind of harsh almost, you know, I don't mean it that way, but yeah, you really want to uh, pick up influences. So, you know, spend part of your time just doing that, you know, do gesture drawing of, of different uh, artists, versions of different characters, you know, um, just try different things. Try things that are really wacky for you. Maybe artists that are not your favorite, but they just do like some interesting kind of poses that you wouldn't have tried. And uh, that is a way to break that. We're talking about comics and, and what comics used to be. And Purveyor of Loop says, soon as we're gonna all be saying, I miss going to the grocery store. And actually, I don't go to the grocery store very often anymore. I do the click and collect, so you're not wrong. I, I miss it, but then I'm lazy and I don't have an hour that I want to spend in the grocery store or these days waiting in line for the grocery store. So. Yeah, we went to buy an Xbox controller today. A friend of mine, his son, his, he broke his controller and they are sold out everywhere. Anyway, yeah, we went to Best Buy. How many lines did you wait in? None, because we went to Best Buy and there was, it had to have been like an hour. You would have had to wait there. And so we just, we left. Oh, and oh. then we went to so it was a huge line at Best Buy. Yeah, then we went to EB Games. They didn't have any. Went to the Source, whatever, another one. They didn't have any. So yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy times. Hmm. Some comments on the hatching. you were Barry, Bernie Wrightson has some good hatching. Barry Windsor Smith. Barry Windsor Smith, yes. Bur well, Bernie Wrightson, of course. Barry Windsor Smith. And I, I to this day, think that Barry Windsor Smith is the most influential artist for, for Jim Lee's style of hatching early on. I, I don't know, because I've never asked him. I should ask him. And that answers the question asked by Diplo Art. Do you often talk to Jim Lee? And well, he doesn't often talk to Jim Lee. He does talk to Jim. Sure. Do you see him? Yeah. Um, Does anybody? Oh, 
Salvera Magier. Does anyone know of any sources of pencils to practice inking over? I think um, DeviantArt has stuff like that, don't they? Um, I, I don't know. I would say even like look at the Instagrams of your favorite artists. Well, I don't know if it, it, like that's a smaller kind of image, but you know what? You could do like a Google image search and uh, just in the settings, type in like your like extra large image file and you can find stuff that way. I have to say thank you to Sydney Montiero, who is 12 years old watching this at uh, 2227. That's like 10. 930 so well thank you Sydney thank you for staying up late he gave it to me military time and I was just Isaac and I were just working on military time so I had to do the the quick conversion I can't I learned it one way I can't wrap around my head around um Dave, can you let them know what is the kind of paper you're using again? This is Strathmore um, Bristol 200 series. It's sold in a pack of 20. Uh, you buy it, you know, you can get it from Amazon, whatever. Uh, my most recent videos have a, a link to an Amazon link. Oh, where you can buy that paper? Right. Perfect. So we have a super chat from Sean Bryant. Thank you, Sean, for the super chat. He says, hey, David Finch, I love seeing what you're doing. Keep up the great work. Ah, uh, thank you. A thumbs up. And um, Xander Malcolmson wants to know your thoughts on Jorge Jimenez. I think he is the best new artist in the business and I mean I don't know maybe even the best artist in the business right now like that's always arguable it's taste and whatever but I think he's ridiculously good I mean incredible and really innovative too not just in terms of like his art is great but also just technique he's kind of pioneering some some new methods that I'm noticing other artists are picking up on so here's a question from the Raven King so I've been drawing anime, but I started by drawing, I, I think he's saying he started by drawing more in your and Jim Lee styles. Now I find myself trying to blend the two styles. Is that finding my own style or just a bad habit to avoid? That is finding your own style. Absolutely. And I would really recommend, you know, find a third style. The more you break your art and and put it back together with a different influence, the more you will um, end up with, with something that's uniquely yours. I, I still remember the first time somebody asked me how I developed my style, the first time that happened. And I remember at the time I was thinking, wow, really, are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, I don't have a style. I just copied from like this person and that person. And you know, the first time I thought it actually is something that's its own thing and you know, it was great, but I, I didn't see it that way. I really thought it was just totally, and I still feel like that. It's just really transparent. Everything that I steal from different people. Atomic Art. When learning about flexors and extensors and rig muscles in the forearm, who did you study from? Um, Simon Bisley, uh, Frank Frazetta, um, Brom. Are you guys familiar with Brom? He's a painter. I got more of my arm drawing from Brom than, I don't know, maybe even anyone. That actually might be the biggest one for me. For that. Google Brom. You will see what I mean. He's a writer too. I just read one of his books. It was really good. That's not right. I'm going to have to fix that. Raven King told me 22 is 10. Thank you. Subtract ten. all. I, I did mention, my, I think my brain shuts off past nine o'clock. Uh, most nights I go to bed at nine, just because I'm up early. I'm a, I'm a morning person. So thank you so much, Raven King, for giving me the tip. I want to say I'll remember it. I won't. For some reason, I just keep thinking minus two, and then subtract 10. But and what is it, actually? Subtract 12. Which makes sense. 
Oh man. I don't Neither think I could do that. Neither one of us were made for, mil for the military, clearly. No, well, and once you happen to subtract more than one or two. We would be late for everything. <clears throat> um, doo -doo -doo. Johnny 56254 8675309. <laughs> how, <laughs> how long did it take you to get a sense of rhythm and drawing? And if anybody got that joke, I know how old you are. Uh, three years. I, really, realistically, I would say I started, I was drawing Cyberforce. I felt like I was floundering really badly. And uh, by the end of it, I was starting to feel more comfortable. And then I started on uh, Ascension, there's another book at Top Cow. And uh, I really, I started looking at some Travis Trust that was on top of some Dale Keown that I was looking at at the time and some uh, Adam Kubert and some different things. And uh, I felt like, okay, wow, I have something, I feel like it's, it's kind of coming together for me and I'm I'm feeling it. And uh, then uh, probably about the second issue, I started really feeling like it was just kind of flowing and I, I wasn't having to, you know, look at reference and I just, you know, it started feeling like my own thing. So yeah, that was three years in for me. So it was a long slog to get there. And that's three years into working professionally. We have a super chat from Jeffrey Niffin. Thank you, Jeffrey, for the super chat very much. He wants to know if you can do a tutorial on how to draw back muscles. Yeah, I'm dreading that one. Uh, Everybody's pretending they don't know my song. <laughs> I'm going to say, uh, okay. Yeah, I do need to do that for sure. I think back muscles is why they invented capes. Because they're hard. Because they're hard. And the reason they're so hard is your um, shoulder, the back of your shoulder has so much movement um, that different positions are a totally different uh, set of anatomy, really. I mean, it's all the same muscles, but you can't draw it the same way. So you, you need to learn not only where the base kind of baseline structure is, but you need to learn how it moves. And it's, you know. Do you think that's why people have a hard time drawing animals? Because ultimately, yeah, when that's, you draw an animal, you're having to draw the back. Yeah, that is exactly why. Yeah. Yeah, when the, the way the arms connect, the shoulder blade is all the way down the side. And so it's it's a much more complex structure than just starting from the shoulder. And yeah, that's why it was a challenge for me. And even the, the rump on an animal is harder. Because on human, you're, you rarely you're not going to draw all of the different lobes of the butt differently. You know, they, nobody does that. But on an animal, you kind of have to, and it's a it's a challenge. All right. So Liam M G Dave, how do you think Jack Kirby got away with having wrong anatomy, and is it okay to cheat like that? Yeah, it's totally okay to cheat like that. Absolutely, it's okay because Jack Kirby, he got away with that because he was dynamic in a way that no artist was uh, at the time. He's the guy that, you know, like this kind of shot where things are jumping out at you and it's, it's you know, pushing right out of the camera. That's something that Jack Kirby pioneered and fans loved him for it. It was revolutionary at the time. So, yeah, I, I think that there are so many different ways that you can be... Um, he is skilled, you know, so his anatomy was pretty stylized uh, for sure, but he had so many other and I mean, he was also outrageously creative. I mean, he co-created three quarters of the Marvel Universe. So uh, yeah, I think he could get away with, you know, some strange anatomy here and there. And, you know, the truth is too it's a different business than it was back then because back then uh the pool of artists that were working in comics were th there are a few factors number one uh illustration of magazines was a much bigger thing at the time and so um the most talented artists at drawing in a realistic way uh were working in magazines and comics were seen as uh um 
something you did if you couldn't if you weren't good enough or you couldn't get work in 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 those fields and then also it was only really limited to people that lived in new york in that area um there just wasn't you know fedex or certainly the internet and so it was a much smaller pool of, of people so you know you can't really compare the the business now when it's a global market uh and also other forms of illustration have really fallen away so you know the best people out there are competing for for the same jobs only a few people were competing for 50 years ago um so dave rbg rgb wants to know how much it would cost to fly you out and get tutored for a couple days <laughs> he is also canadian because right now we can't cross the border but that's cute <laughs> We're stuck up here in the Great North. Yeah, we sure are. Thank goodness it's summer. <clears throat> One of these days, it'd be nice to do this at a convention, you know? Uh, you know, actually, like, do that's this is what those drink and draw things are, isn't it? I don't know. I've we, never done we one. Never do them because I don't drink and draw. Well, we always go back to the hotel room and you try to get through every commission that you got at the show. Also, I don't drink and draw, yeah. you know, those two don't go together for me. No. I don't like it. Um, Lance DeBoyer says he has an original page from one of your Cyberforce issues. No kidding. Huh. Not a lot of those left. Well, floating around out there. Now, well, that's pretty cool. Uh, about it, Inc. When Image Comics did a talent search for the next wave of talent, I applied and was crushed when passed up. My question is, how'd you get your foot in the door? So I would ask, did they have feedback? When, or did they, when, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> like if you got feedback from Image saying, you know, what you need to work on. Because there would be a reason. Yeah, I wonder. I don't. I don't know. Not necessarily, they, but they felt like there was something that, like, your what they commented on would be your strengths and your. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, you know what. Keep at it. If they have a, a a talent search, something like that, you don't know who's necessarily looking at the the work, and you know their taste is going to come into it, and so you know it's not it's it's not going to be a hundred percent kind of fair thing. Um, it can't be. So there's that. And then, um, I mean, I, I can tell you, I, I don't know if I have it or my mother has it, but I have so many rejection letters from, from multiple different places. I've got a stack and uh, you know, every, certainly every working comic artist from my generation has that, you know, nobody, nobody submits that way anymore. Uh, and you know, the awful truth is apparently almost nobody gets hired that way you know from or did back in the day anyway like you can't submit work the way that you used to be able to but nobody got hired that way anyway people got hired at conventions or other ways but anyway yeah i i got rejected all over the place so uh yeah he wants to know if i smoke cigarettes because i'm always coughing <laughs> so the story behind my cough is the year I met David, the winter I met David actually, I had bronchitis. And I had two small children. I was going to school full time and I did not have time to go to the doctor and get an antibiotic. And plus, like I just didn't have time. And you're not thinking about it like, hey, this is a cough that I'm now gonna have for the rest of my yes, life. I'm gonna end up doing damage to my lungs and have scar tissue. So. Um, yes, I have a chronic cough, and it is the worst time ever to have a chronic cough because I have to keep, well, first of all, I have to wear the mask because, you know, you should wear the mask anyway, but I have to keep saying it's not a COVID cough. I don't have COVID. Yeah, nobody believes you. I don't. I've been coughing for 15 years as long as... No, I, I mean, here, I, I mean, when you go out, yeah, yeah everybody looks at you like, oh, but no. David, the gift of... I can I can mark my cough from the time I met you. Yeah, there you go. So that's how I know how long I've had the cough for, and it helps. Like I take Advil and I use inhalers and stuff, but I can yeah. never, never just get rid of it. Yeah. Sorry. So you have to put up with my cough every week. 
Can't have good without a little bad. Um, I had I had a question. This is I have to say as sometimes as these questions come up, I'm just about to ask them and I wait. I go wait a second. I think that's a joke. So for example, um, brain games. How do you determine how much thigh gap to give the Hulk? No, I know that's a joke. But for a minute there, I was like, what? Oh, no, it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a joke. It is a joke, but that's what I'm saying sometimes. I'm, I, I just want you people to know that sometimes I almost ask the question and then my clue into the fact that it's a joke. Um, Legend of the Black Star. Hey, Dave, thank you so much for doing these videos. They've been a real encouragement to me. Keep up the great work, my friend. Thank you very much. And, uh, hold on, I'm, I skipped past. Kathleen Turner says, Dave, how do you even draw this? With a pen. Mm -hmm. Will we, Ghetto Comic, will you ever review fan art for a video? Yeah, um, th that's actually something I had been talking to Robert Morzullo about, and we kind of wanted to do that together. And then, you know, time gets busy, and we, uh, we haven't talked about that for a couple of weeks. So I need to uh, give him a call and say, hey, when do you want to set that up? Because I would like to do it. It's something we did uh, with Jimmy Reyes on his channel uh, quite a while ago, and we really enjoyed it a lot. So yeah, I would like to do that. I, I think that would end up being, maybe we would do it on Robert's channel for that, or if we did it on this one, it would just be a different night. Uh, and then I don't know if I can count on Meredith for that one. I, it's it's always a for what? to do uh, help me with a, a like an art portfolio stream. We can talk about it. We can talk about it. But yeah, we're I'm gonna do it one way or another. If I can get Meredith to do it, I don't know. We'll see. She doesn't want to say no right now while she's live. <laughs> but I know what she's thinking. No. Well, it's always. You know what it's like doing anything once you're doing it yeah you have a great once time you're having a great time it's overcoming inertia yep hmm. yeah that's true you gotta overcome your inertia hmm. all right it is dave's fault that i have a cough christopher yes it is it is um I was too busy dating him to go to the doctor. I'm blaming on you, not on this, not on the fact that I had two small children and was a single mom. You know, there was one new factor there, right? That was me. Yeah. I've been slowly killing you for years. <laughs> so you admitted it now on live stream. Yeah. So if someday I turn up dead. We all know who to look at. Oof. <laughs> Better watch out. I'm gonna hope I live for a long time. Really, I'm not insured enough to make it worth killing me. All right, S Sydney has a question. What, David? What is the best and fastest way to improve my perspective comics drawing? Could I hash the background for a perspective effect? I think Sydney should watch your perspective video from Tuesday. Yeah, I don't know how to explain it better than that. Now, there's more to it. Uh, there's a part two, which is coming. But um, really, the best way to do it is uh, to just get a script from a writer that asks you to draw things that you've never drawn, and you don't know what you're going to do, and you're kind of panicking, and you just do it. That is, I hate to say, that's how I learned. It's the best way. You just, you know, jump in with both feet. So uh, yeah, if you're worried about drawing something in perspective, you're not gonna learn it through theory. You have to learn it through practice. Dave, can you zoom out a little bit since you're jumping around? Uh, sure. And we have another super chat from Daniel Castelli. Thank you so much, Daniel. He says, I've been a fan of fan for years. Thanks for doing this. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you very much. Do you think a lot of fine artists are pretentious? Um, well, sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure not all of them, you know, but yeah, of course. I, I, honestly, I, I, in their defense, you kind of have to be because, you know, you, the only value your artwork has is the value you place on it. It's, it's not something with an intrinsic value. So if you want people to think you're worth millions of dollars, you need to convince them of that. And so, you know, uh, that's a skill, I'm sure. 
you ha you have to be able to you have to be pretentious a bit i don't think you could just be completely down to earth and like oh shucks and have people want to spend millions of dollars on your art but you know do i think that they look down on comic art yes generally i do think they do and i think that they do it because they couldn't remotely do it themselves not for a second none of them Oh, we got things falling over out there. Yeah, that was your box of cardboard boxes. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I think it's much easier for them to just deride it than to actually have to confront it, you know? Just say it's worthless. You know, if you can just dismiss something out of hand, then you don't have to look at, you know, what it is that somebody's doing and whether it's something that you could ever do. Yeah, I know, but you know what? It's true. Uh, there are like, enough art teachers out there that, that dump on comics and yeah. First of all, I'd love to see them do it, and I'd love to see any of the artists that they actually respect do it. Like, give it a try sometime. You know, there are comic artists that can do, like, you know, uh, Alex Ross. He can paint as well as anyone, anyone. But how many of those people that he can paint as well as do what he does? And I'll tell you what, it's none. So I will take my favorite comic artist over, you know, a lot of different types of artists any day. Grudge match. Ronnie Hoflin might want to retract his these dreams are awesome super chat comment now. Why? Because <laughs> you're complaining. Oh, because I'm com <laughs> I'm ranting. But anyway, Ronnie had a super chat. So thank you so much, Ronnie. Thank and you very much, said, Ronnie. He did say these dreams are awesome. Keep up the great work. Oh, well, thank you. It's a good thing your art's pretty, honey. Uh oh, people are falling asleep getting late in the day oh no well yeah it as is you late guys fall asleep and go to bed thank you for coming also i feel like there's a few people have that it's like the first time i see your name and i'll say i i can't get my question seen and because there's so many people watching it i i don't know if everybody who's we have 570 ish people watching the stream right now i don't know if all of you are trying to be on our to, to participate as part of the chat. So please know that if I miss your question, it's not intentional. I really do try to get, you know, go through the questions and- Yeah, just ask her again and badger her until she gets asking. it. Don't just ask once and then you'll keep coming up in the stream. So persistence is key. Um, Ivan Kaborski, hey David, if you live in Australia, do you have a chance to become a comic artist for DC or Marvel, and I think the answer to that is yes, because David Yarden. Oh, and a lot more than just David Yarden. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of great artists are from Australia, from uh, New Zealand. Oh my gosh, what's her? She she did Wonder Woman. Um, Nick Nicola. Nicola Scott. Yeah, Nicola yep. Scott. She's I think from Australia. Also a wonderful person. Yeah, she's so sweet. Um. So yeah, there's lots of people from around the world. You can be on the moon as long as you have an internet connection. And there you go, fair enough. Another super chat question from King Everett. Oh, thank you again, King Everett. King Everett is the best. Is your favorite he superhero super chat? Is my, my what? Is your favorite hero super chat? Is that his question? Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe uh, I'll have to, that'd be a good idea for a, at some point I want to do a, um, like create a character from the ground up, you know, something original in a stream. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Dave and needs a logo. Yeah, I've been, yeah, well, you know what, one of these days, but I do want to do a character and I think it would actually be a lot of fun to uh, take suggestions while I do it. I think it'd be a blast. It might be a very strange looking character because I would take your suggestions unless they're, you know, like completely crazy. crazy. But, you know, pretty crazy. I would still go for it. Why not? So really what I'm doing right now is uh, this is still in, in a sense a bit of a block in because I'm still using like this pen. I don't get my finest deal. Oh my gosh, this might have to be a continued but for next week. It's oh. already 10 o'clock. Oh, you know what? We're uh, about a quarter of the way through. 
That's not true. I'm most of the way through. The final part doesn't actually take that long. But yeah, there are places where I just can't get the fine detail that I want. And so I just go in with my thin pen. Um, and I, I'll tell you what, I really could spend another, like I could spend hours just detailing and making everything as clean as possible. And I'll do that for a cover. This is obviously a sketch, so it goes a little quicker. I don't really, you know, I get it all in there as cleanly as I can for a sketch, but it's, it's not the same level of detail. And also, uh, this is how pages go. The more time I have, the more refined they get. And when I really don't have time, you know, some things just are not quite as refined. So. All right. So we have another super chat question from Brandon Spence. Thank you very much, Brandon, for the super chat. And he wants to know what sort of things did you take from Frank Frazetta? For me, he seems like he's not as easy to take from as you or other people. And maybe it's because of the different medium. Uh, you know, let me just say, Frank Frazetta um, has done a lot of comic work. So he didn't just do painting. Now I do, I take a lot of his painting and I will agree with you that it's a little bit more challenging because it's a painting. But the thing is, even in his painting, he really worked with solid shapes. Like he, you can see a good solid core shadow that has a shape. It's not just faded out. So it's, it's really not the hardest to take a painting of his and translate it. But I remember trying that and struggling with it. But you know, I've got, uh, he did a book called Johnny Comet. Uh, it was a comic strip. Um, I don't know how hard that is to find, but uh, that's a great book. There's another book. I'm trying to look at my shelf right now. I've got it somewhere. I'll never find it now that I'm looking for it. And I don't want you guys. Oh, wait, here, I see it. It's Telling Stories, the comic art of Frank Frazetta. I almost feel like I should get it down off the shelf. You know what? You guys got to see this. So this is my big Frank Rosetta comic art book. And there's some early work from him and it's still incredible, but it's, you know, it can be a little different. And then I want to find, he would do um, like these, these love stories, but look at how incredible some of these figures are. It's absolutely beautiful. And it's a bit of a different style. It's a little more old fashioned, obviously, but it's totally translatable. There's, um, uh, this is the one. I mean, it's incredible stuff. Every page is amazing. Look at that. And yeah, I'd say this is totally something that you could work with. I would highly recommend finding this book if you can find that. He's got so much great black and white work. I think people really forget that he was actually a comic artist for years before he was ever a painter. As a matter of fact, I think I watched a documentary and he said, or something, it was in one of his books, he said uh, he was having trouble getting comic work for a while, which is insane when you look at this. Um, and so he decided to try painting and uh, an artist friend of his said, you know, you realize there's a lot more to painting than than just, you know, using paint. It's a, and uh, then he looked at one of Frank's paintings and he, he said, okay, yeah, you're a painter. <laughs> That's funny. All right, we got another question, another super chat question from SCS Powerlifting. He wants to know if we are gonna do a draw along or maybe draw a character mashup. Because we were talking about doing, this is back. I need to figure out how to do this because somebody said a draw along and I said, yeah, because I would like to do it. I don't know what to do to make that work. Maybe Eric knows. I'll have to ask. I'm going to ask Eric Grove. Eric and or Dan might know too. Yeah. You know what? I will ask. I'm going to ask around. I'm going to ask Eric, see if he knows. And I'll ask Robert Marzula. Maybe he knows. Maybe Dan. And uh, I, I would like to do that. I think that would actually be really great. Pip keeps asking, Dave, do you have any plans to crowdfund your own comic? Not currently, no. Because he's working on a book that yeah. is going to take at least another year. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's longer than it was going to be. But yeah, no. So not currently. But yeah, maybe in the future, you know. I Look, I love working on Marvel and DC um, and all those characters. I, I love it. You know, it's there's nothing like it. But I also love doing my own thing, and I'd love to do something with Meredith again, you know. So it's something I have certainly thought about. 
my concern with crowdfunding is crowdfunding generally it takes a form of like kickstarter right but kickstarter means that i would have to do like goals and and rewards and all that kind of thing and i am so deathly afraid of setting reward levels and then not following through the way or, that i you know or how about you do a kickstarter how about your book shipped to the states and then have covid19 hit yeah, Meredith, Meredith did a Kickstarter, and you know what? You really fell fell through. Uh, fell through. <laughs> I'm not Freudian through. slip. Books are still getting out. I think it followed through very well. Yeah. I think regardless, but yeah, it was a challenge. That was definitely unexpected. <laughs> All right, John Guerin has asked this question multiple times tonight. See, persistence is key. Are you a friend slash fan of Joe Mad? I'd love to see your take on one of his Dark Siders characters. I like to think that I'm a friend. I, you know what? Uh, I've uh, talked to him a few times, but really not that much. So I couldn't say that I'm I'm close. Uh, but yeah, he's a great guy. I, you know, I really enjoyed talking to him, and I'm a huge, huge fan of his characters. And uh, yeah, I, I would love to draw Dark Siders. I, I mean, he means like a like a pinup or, or I don't know, maybe a cover or something. Yeah. And here's another question that I've seen a few times, Stephen Watley. Can you recommend some darker comics for someone trying to get away from the PG Marvel type stuff? I think image stuff tends to be darker. Um, you mean like thematically, not art wise? Like yes, like more R rated. Well, you know, okay, DC has their what's what's the name of the line? Oh, Black Label. Black Label. Yeah, I was gonna say Back in Black, but that's uh, ACDC. Right. <laughs> and Marvel had um, Marvel Knights. Uh, so there's there's that stuff for Marvel and DC. Um, Vertigo, you know, Vertigo had a lot of very edgy stuff. Like I, I was talking about Hunter Bullets um, last week on the stream, and that is a very dark book. I mean, there are places where I thought, oh man, I've actually read. I love Brian Azzarello's writing, so uh, I read all that stuff too. And there are places where I kind of want to put it down. So, um, and then yeah, Image really, I'd say is your go-to for that kind of material you know it's it, there they just have such a range of things and you can find superheroes but you can also just find you know really mature stories from some some of the best writers in the business you know some of the best marvel and dc writers uh, writers from all over the place do image books so yeah take a look at what they've got the original lucifer from the 2000 you know that book yeah johnny cage jp7 suggested that yeah yeah i'm trying to remember the artist anyway it's a good book i've got it uh, so Z zed's t who would you recommend regarding storytelling panel layout composition wise to learn from um hmm uh, Greg Capullo. I think he's the best at storytelling and, you know. Composition. Com yeah. I mean, okay, like compositions, and I think he's phenomenal at that too. Um, that, that's a broader, it's a bit of a different thing, I guess. So, you know, if you want like a widescreen, you know, kind of movie sort of a feel, you're not going to beat. Um, um, Brian Hitch, I, I think I, I, he's a great storyteller too. So I'd really recommend Brian Hitch. And I think that Greg Capullo is just an, an incredible natural storyteller. And yeah, you want drama on the page and, and believable, likable characters. I think you can't beat them. Um, Sketch Medic's back with us this week. What's your warm up routine prior to longer pieces if you have one? Um, I don't truthfully. I do try to sketch uh, just to practice. Like, I know that the only way you ever improve, or or really, you know, the only way that you you don't devolve, because that happens as you get older. It's a natural thing if you don't fight it. Is you have to study, and so I try to do that. I uh, go back and forth. I mean, truthfully, I, I get busy and it, it gets a little difficult to devote the time to it that I should. But generally speaking, I don't really, I don't do warm up, not that much. I'm just too busy and, 
you know, I just let it be stiff for a bit until I get comfortable. That's all. Um, straw hatching. Remember we talked about that earlier? Yeah, okay. So. Mike Stewart says straw hatching is when Mark Silvestri's cross hatching is straw pattern and not uniform. Like more chaotic, controlled chaos. Do you ever... You never do that. No, That's I would leave that to Mark. You have to be someone like Mark Silvestri to pull that off. And I wouldn't recommend that it's something you... I'd be leery about it because it'd be very easy to make a mess of something. Like, he is, you know, ridiculously talented and knowledgeable. And, he, you know, his level of control is uh, like unbeatable. So, you know, I, I'd be worried. Personally, now I could be wrong. And every artist is different. I couldn't pull that off. I know that. So my opinion, maybe I'm just speaking for myself. I wouldn't do it. But you know what? I couldn't render like Mark when I started too. I tried very, very hard. I just couldn't pull it off. So I ended up kind of having to go my own way. Did Todd, Thomas Brock has put this up three times, so it must be true. Todd McFarland made over three million in a month for an articulate spawn. Dave, you can do it. <laughs> okay, I'm on it. You know what Todd did? You know he did Todd toys, and uh, nobody was doing toys of that kind of quality at the time, and you know that stuff took the market by storm. So he's another good Canadian. Yeah, he sure is. Not that we're biased being Canadian and stuff. He's a good dude. I like him. Yeah, he's a lot of fun. He's a nice guy. Uh, Rockin' Records. What's your advice on drawing straight lines? And does it get easier the more you draw? Well, my advice would be, do you mean, does he mean in render? Okay, I'm going to assume you mean in rendering and, you know, uh, obviously a ruler, you know, I mean, that's, but I know that's, I'm assuming that's not what you mean. Um, Let's not get snarky. Again. That's what I mean. Yeah. I, but that was what, okay. So when you're rendering, I want to make sure that I'm not getting lost here. Okay. So if I go really slow, I end up with a bit of a, uh, Let's zoom in. Okay, so if I go really slow, it's really hard for me to get uh, something that, look, and this actually is an effect that I, I like at times. It looks a little bit jagged, but if I go quick, uh, I get something that is much more um, even and has more flow to it. So, um, a really good way to get good at, at pulling these kinds of lines because I pull upward this way. Some artists actually are more comfortable going this way. I can do it this way too, but I, I have trouble getting the lighter touch. So I, I generally go this way. But I would say, yeah, what you want to do is just get a piece of paper and just do this a lot. And then another thing is um, I'm rendering with my, I'm not rendering with my wrist like this. I can, but I'm rendering with my whole arm and my arm is so big on the thing because I zoomed in, it's hard to see, but I'm, I'm moving my whole arm to get these lines. And it takes a bit to get that control. But once you kind of start getting comfortable, it's amazing just how much control you can get very, very easily that way. And just do these kinds of tests. Uh, an, an inking test that I remember inkers would do is you draw dots like this and then you have to connect that dot to the other dot and I'm missing every time as you can see so I need more work on that but you know that's a, a great <laughs> you can't see it because it's coming off the thing but yeah uh, I would say yeah do you know two dots together do a big line of them and then just try and with a, a quick line like this try and connect it and oh I got one let's just do this all night there so yeah Um, <clears throat> hold on here. Liam MG, Dave, do you like Alex Toth at all, even though it's hyper minimalistic? Yeah, absolutely. I like Alex Toth in the same way that I like um, 
uh, Eduardo Rizzo or Mike Mignola or, you know, and that kind of minimalistic, it, it's hard to do detail and make all that work. And that's a challenge to figure out if it's not something you're, but, but making something work in a minimalistic style like that, you have to really know your stuff because you can't just, um, if, if you don't have something separating well with pure black and white, you're sunk. And, you know, I think, and also, I mean, he was an incredible, incredible draftsman. His figures were really, they had such great flow to him. His expressions were great. He drew like a, a realism that was, uh, it, it was a very dynamic, um, it wasn't realism, but it was closer than I'm able to get. I, and I'm sure he was doing it out of his head, which is why it had that look. It didn't, it didn't look photo referenced, but it did look, uh, well, incredible. I mean, you know, he's, he's gotta be, you know, if you're being fair, maybe top five of the best ever. I mean, I tend to, I like the image artists and the, the more detailed kind of work. And, you know, that's kind of my thing, but like, just strictly speaking, you know, who's the most talented artist out there. If you know, you have that list, he's got to be on it. Silvera Majeri, do you think the detail work like Bernie Wrightson did has a place in today's comics, especially in his backgrounds? Uh, yeah, it does. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I think so. Now, colors are more advanced now, so it, it's possible to, and it makes a lot of artists just um, a little more loose as a result because they can get away with it but uh fans still appreciate detail and you know the effort that goes into it i think absolutely yeah it's there's there's certainly room for it it's a huge challenge though it's not easy to do it's part of the reason why you don't see it very much i mean nobody i think the closest person i've ever seen there have been a couple that have really come close to bernie wrightson in terms of you know the rendering and there's kelly jones uh he did Dead Man. That was my favorite stuff he's ever done. He did Batman for a while. I loved his Dead Man. I loved his Batman too. I've got it too. But um, the big ears, right? The big ears. On his Batman, that's Kelly Jones. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He did Amigo the big. Was yeah. My You're, yeah. Bare minimum knowledge of artwork. Married to a comic book artist. Yeah, and Sam Keith. Um, yeah, Sam Keith, I think had, had yeah, he was as good as Bernie Wrightson at inking. See, that's one thing about living with you. I've kind of absorbed art through osmosis. Yeah, whether you like it or not. Yeah. Just like how many years do you I gotta zoom back out. Sorry guys. Yeah. I hand comic books to me and I would tell you no, I don't read comics. The the problem is the chat is quiet. So when I'm zoomed way in and nobody can see what I'm drawing, I don't have people going oh, like I can't you know, it'd almost be better if we had sound so I could I yeah. would know You're fine, nobody's complaining. Yeah. Yeah. We got another super chat question. Daniel Castelli. When I look at your art, I get phantom pain in my hand because I can feel how hard, how much hard work you put into it. You're my favorite artist, and I'm just thankful you really share so much knowledge. Oh well, thank you very much. That's so nice. Yeah, thank you so much, and thank you for the super chat. I'm so glad we did this, aren't you? Yes. It's been really good. It's always fun. I told you I like spending time with you, so it's fun that way and then you get to chat with people and Yeah. It's like I feel like we've got a little community here. Yeah, we do. Five hundred and forty four of our closest friends. Our closest new friends. But then you guys should know, as you come back every week, I, I recognize names in the chat. Oh yeah, me too, yeah, for sure. So. <laughs> and it is a community and yeah. that you know it's fun to see people come back week after week yes um oh here we go here's a question from other minds you declared with certainty that alcohol does you no favors when drawing Please share a story as to why you come to that conclusion. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Walk right into that one. 
Yeah, really. I okay. I I don't really have. Uh, it's not like I have a. Oh, I got really drunk and I drew. You know, truthfully, I have. You know, we've had wine with dinner and then I I need to go down. And I've got a deadline and I've got to work and then I just can't do it. I just. Uh, yeah, I end up just falling asleep on the couch and I don't have to be drunk. I just even a little bit I, It really makes it hard for me to get my head where I need it to be So I don't do it. I mean, you know It's not like I would never have a drink, but certainly not any time around when I'm gonna work Which is most of the time So yeah, I don't have a whole lot of time to be drinking Yeah, because you work Multiple times throughout the day. Yeah, so GB David Finch, do you ever work larger than 11 by 17 on commercial work? And if so, how do you manage scanning? And let me just say that that question is directed to me. And that when David does, because I do all the scanning, and when David works larger than 11 by 17, it's the bane of my existence. Especially when a standard page for the book he's doing is two 11 by 17s, and he has to do a double page spread which means I'm having to scan four 11 by 17 pages all taped together. And they don't fold properly and I have to like Photoshop them. So we have, because it would be impossible to not have the large flatbed scanner. So I don't have to, I can scan more. I think it's like 12 by 18 or. Yeah, we got a mortgage on that. <laughs> we'll have it paid off in 12 years. Because the scanner, yeah. to buy the scanner. It was yeah. expensive. It was. We did. But for the amount of time and energy it takes, because when I first met Dave, I would cobble together. We just had one of those scanners you could buy at Best Buy. So I'd have to scan each 11 by, C by 17 page twice and then use Photoshop to put them together. So at least this is one last step. But yeah. because it was easy for me to just scan 11 by 17 page, Dave decided to work double size. And so I still have to. And I, pages. I was working on like just a big single sheet, that big. But I like working on the couch, and I just found I'd be on the couch, like way up here, trying to. And so I, I went back to look at the page spread format, and then I can fold it over and work on the top. It's just more convenient for me. But it does mean when we scan it, I have to methodically go through in the final scan and clean up the, the seam. But it's worth it. All right, got another super chat from Joe Wills Art, and he says, "Finally found your Discord. Yes, oh great, I'm part of the community. Thank you so much for the super chat, Joe. And thank you for joining the community and you know <coughs> coming and being here with us. Oh, this is so nice. Um, Jorge ICC, I've watched every stream since the beginning to the end. My little daughter too. Is she?" Comes to see me drawing at the same time. Oh, that's great. You're coming to YouTube has my Sundays reserved at 7 p.m. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, thank you so, so much, much, Jorge. That's great. I'm going a little quicker with the stuff on the ground here. Just, you know. Because his wife turns into a pumpkin. Yeah, I think I, I might actually end up in the morning filling this out a little bit, you know, so I know you'll. So I'm going to finish what's here and then I'll I'll do a little more. So that your, your wife, you want to carry your pumpkin wife to bed. Yeah, well, and I still have detail to put on the figure. That's the thing. I know. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I'm going to stop on the ground here, and I'm going to finish the figure. And then, yeah, the Hulk takes a while, apparently. So those big muscles. Um, Daniel Lee, have you ever had issues with being too broad in your approach and what you wanted to learn so that got in the way of your career goal? Uh, yes, actually, early on, um, I was really, really struggling with lighting and shadow and that kind of thing. I could not get my head around it. And part of the reason for it was uh, I was seeing these artists that were doing uh, like multiple light sources. Everything was underlit. And Dale Keown was incredible at that. You know, I, I still have not, I've not seen anybody that does it quite like him. And I was trying so hard to do that. And I just, yeah, I was falling so hard on my face. And Mark Silvestri, who was my boss, uh, said, you need to stop doing that and just go with a single light source. I'm using a tiny little pen. I'm going to zoom in. Go with a single light source and uh, um, 
keep it simple just do a like direct overhead when you get comfortable with that then go on and you can try some of that other stuff and i remember i sat back down and then i got back up i went to his desk and i said you know what i can't do it like i can't let it go and he said all right whatever basically that was his philosophy he would help as much as you could and if you weren't willing to listen he would just say okay do what you want to do you know and uh so i did and then it was probably i don't know three four days maybe a week later uh that i i finally caved and um that's when i finally started getting comfortable with lighting so it was advice i should have taken right away it would have really helped i don't know that it hurt me for too long because you know fortunately i had marks of estry to to sit me down and say don't do what you're doing um i think if i didn't have that i could have fought with that for years that to my mind is the best thing about having um a mentor is it's just somebody to see the mistakes that you're making and say don't do that um all right christopher palacio sorry i have to ask again do you use reference for buildings and characters or is everything from your mind it is both like i'm not using any reference for this right now uh, I just did, uh, you know, a perspective video. I didn't use reference for that either, but I will at times. Uh, part of that is if I have to draw a, like a specific place that really exists, either in a comic, I guess not really exists then, but you know, that exists in one form or another. You know, if it's if it's like Penguin's Lair and it needs to look like Pen Penguin's Lair, then yes, I'm going to use reference. Um, and then I also. Uh, <laughs> like the detail that goes on top of a building all the little chimneys and pipes and everything you can find some really incredible pictures of of rooftops in new york and you know it's fun to use some of that kind of reference or you know maybe another artist approach for some of those things i will look at that stuff but yeah generally for the most part i'm not really looking at things like that when i'm actually doing my pages generally a lot of times i kind of you know, I'll draw one background in a comic, you know, a 22 page comic where I'm really looking at a lot of stuff and I'm picking up different references and then I start to get a feel for it and I just move on. Uh, like guns, I can fake a gun pretty well, different types of guns. It's not going to be perfect, but it doesn't have to be. You know, I don't care if it looks exactly like a whatever, whatever type of, I just want it to look believable. So, you know, I, I just, I don't have time to methodically copy different things and make them look you know exactly right i do think that making up cars with no reference is a mistake generally they're just too identifiable so i'll do it in a tiny little car in the distance but generally if it's a if it's a car that is closer or whatever i will make sure it's referenced generally speaking if i can get away with it i use sketchup which is a 3d program i mentioned this before but it's a 3d program um very very simple used for architecture and there is a resource called 3D Warehouse and uh, uh, users just put in all of their own models and you could practically type in any car, kind of car that you could think of and you can find a simple 3D model of it that is very, very good for using for art reference. And again, I just take my piece of paper and slap it up on the screen and you know, I get the general thing in there. I don't really try and get all the detail in. I don't have the patience to trace for that long. And I also like to detail it my own way, but just to get the proportion so I'm not fighting with it for hours. And I mean, I, I spent years, most of my career drawing cars completely using perspective and doing it right. I had to because those kind of resources weren't there, but now that they are, yeah, I am not above taking advantage. So uh, Killer Taco says, this is amazing, Mr. Finch. Thank you so much for these glorious live streams. And okay. let me just say, and you are a huge inspiration for me. Oh, uh, well, thank you. And you know what? It's great to see you on here. I see your, your comments on the videos, and I really appreciate all those. Yeah, so thank you so much for coming. It's good to see him here. All right. And then here's the next question. Paolo Fulgencio. Fulgencio? I think I got that right. Hi, David. What are basic comic panel layouts that new artists can use and not look like a beginner? Um, maybe somebody in the chat can help me out with this. It was an artist that did a, uh, it's like a 20 odd panel, 
um, breakdown of different panel types, you know, the silhouette and um, a long shot, medium shot, uh, different types of framing. And they did it all in one page with all these little panels of different types of panels. If anybody knows, it would be really great if you would give them that one. That I think is a great resource for it. I would highly recommend that. If they don't, Meredith, then I'll, I'll try and go into it a little bit. Okay, Lewis Womble. Hi, David, big fan of your work. Thanks for taking the time to show and provide this valuable information. How long did it take you to master anatomy? What did you use? The, I, in terms of what you used to learn from, I think Eric has posted the books that you recommend in the chat multiple times. Yeah, uh, well, Bridgman's Guide to Life Drawing, but, Andrew um, Loomis. So he, and he did, he actually specifically tagged Lewis. But maybe you could talk about how long it took you to really feel like you'd mastered your anatomy. It took me <coughs> three months for me to say, okay, I know where all the muscles go generally from anatomy books. Um, but I still couldn't draw them that well, you know? But it was enough that I, I could look I could look at other artists, I could kind of break it down. It took me about three months to kind of get there where I, I had my start. And then from there, um, it took me two years anyway. I mean, of, of just back and forth looking at different artists and saying, okay, you know, this artist does this this way. Why do they do it this way? Do I like, you know, and I would try it out, see if it works for me and just experiment with, with different different uh, ways of, of connecting anatomy together based on how different people did it. Uh, that took me, and I was still working on that, and I still am working on that at times, but to get comfortable where I, uh, excuse me, where I felt like, okay, I'm, I'm, you know, it's something I can rely on and I can sit down and draw a picture and, and be reasonably confident and it's not gonna, you know, fall apart. I'd say it probably took me two years before I got in and then about another two years or so when I was working. So, you know, but this is a, this is going from, you know, not knowing anything, not knowing any of the muscles to being a professional, uh, working on a comic and feeling like I could, I could get a figure out there quickly, efficiently, and it would work. So, you know, there's a lot of levels to that and you can do beautiful figures and fight with it. And I still do, you know, so I, I wouldn't say, oh, you know what? It's going to take you, you know, years and years. It'll take you actually considerably less time, but then you're still going to be growing from there. So we have an awesome chat because the answer to the question about the panels is Wally Wood's 22 panels that always work. It's always Wally Wood. So. When in doubt, it's Wally Wood. <laughs> Who had the answer? Uh, multiple people. Oh, that's because you guys are the best. Well, that's what I mean. We have the best chat. I knew. I was pretty sure that somebody would know. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, take a look at that. 21 panels that always work. He's got, you know, and you, know, you want like a, a, a crib sheet shorthand. You know, here's how to not look like an amateur. That's it, right there. Uh, teen artist, who is the most entertaining character to draw? By the way, I love your art. Oh, well, thank you very much. I am going to say the most entertaining. Hmm. Lobo, last night, a few weeks ago. Yeah, Lobo. I love drawing Batman. I love drawing Moon Knight. I love drawing Wolverine. That, that you just it's just plain fun like i think it's yeah, a but, different question yeah i know but it's i'm telling you the ones that i enjoy drawing the most okay. maybe even sorry, I, I'm just, sorry for arguing with you I, maybe i would have to say wolverine right now you know and i know i'm saying that because i haven't drawn him for a bit yeah. if i had drawn him lately i'd be saying somebody else 
That's true. You always want what you can't have. Yep, the grass is always greener. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Um... By the way, yes, I drew rocks to cover his feet. But you've drawn feet in other panels, other, other live streams, so we know you can draw feet. I don't think they believe it now. This is a total cheat. But you know, I want it to look like he's super heavy and he's breaking up the ground even as he goes. So it's not totally, it's a cheat. I had a couple questions. Oh, hold on, super chat. Super chat from Daniel Castelli again. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you so much, Daniel. Daniel says your Noman video was the best anatomy instruction and I've studied Bridgman for years. Don't be humble. Recommend ah. that to people. Thank you, because I actually have also said to him to please tell you guys that there are two videos available for sale on our website. One is on perspective, and one is drawing superheroes. Yes, that's so true. If you go to our website, you can also, it's www.dfinchartist.com, and you can, they are digital downloads. So you can just download them and have them on your computer. That's, yeah, that's true. I'm constantly like, hey, hey. Did you I know, I don't like selling something. We're really bad, to be, to be fair. I don't know if it's the Canadian in us or what, but we are the worst at hawking our wares. Yeah. But they, they are, I think they're valuable videos. Well, and thank you very much for the, you know, the super chat. Yes, uh, the recommendation it, for the yeah, Noman videos yeah. too. Things get a little dry. I think it might be, it might be empty. You know, what, I'm gonna switch. Uh, Back up. Logan Phillips, how do you feel about Lee Bermejo and his unique style? I think his work is super different for the industry. Yeah, I think he's he's incredible. You know, and that's an example of a, a style that's very very realistic. Like a lot more than I go for sure, but he makes it work just because it has such a. Uh, individual style looks so real but it's yeah, it's totally his own thing I don't think anybody else could do that so yeah I think he's phenomenal and you know also it's just it's always refreshing to see somebody that's so original you know in the business so yeah I think he's great and he's a good dude everybody's telling you to sell 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 <laughs> all right well you know thanks and the videos are good value for adult. Uh, that their words, not mine. Uh, well, thank you. <clears throat> All right. How are we doing for time? It's ten thirty. Okay. Are you I'm just your name right now. Uh, almost. I I put a things. I felt like if I could get a little bit more rocks in, I could actually be just finished. You know never enough I am gonna you know what because I know you got to go to bed all right it's not just that I have a child upstairs waiting to be put to bed too. oof yeah all right I mean to be fair nobody's going to school he all right tell me himself he doesn't have to get up in the morning I'm gonna pull out here show the picture oh Brandon Spence this is the best and this this actually sounds so much like Dave Brandon says, I remember Dave telling me to just pirate the Noman videos. Such a kind guy. <laughs> <laughs> I did not say that. You're gonna get me in trouble. <laughs> <clears throat> yep, that sounds like you. All right, I'm gonna sign it. Here we go. So this is my Rampaging Hulk. Thank you. To, well, let me sign it and then I'll say thank you. I'm gonna say thank you looking down at my picture. Make sure you pull all the way out so people can see it. I'm pulled out. It's okay. it's just a little bit too tall to see the whole thing. But yeah, there it is. All right, thank you so much for watching. Uh, you know, like and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. And we will be doing this again next week. I am not sure what I'm gonna draw next. I know I had talked to someone about doing um, Silver Surfer. 
and I might be able to talk Meredith into that. I really would like to do it actually just because the textures on the character are so different and it's metal, which a lot of artists struggle with and I've been getting a lot of questions about. So, I, And also I love Silver Surfer, he's a great character. So that might be next week. We're gonna have to talk about it over here. But again, thank you very, very much for coming and staying with us and asking all the great questions. We had a great time as always, I hope you did. And we will see you next week. And every week it's the same. I never am actually ready to shut it off. All right, here we go. Bye, thank you.